Hello people, my name is Ferdy and in this video I will show you how you can create a professional website using the Divi theme. The website we will create is a website I could sell for between three and $5,000 to a client. And that's not all. Besides showing you how you can make this website, I will also give you all the pages for free, the headers, the footers, the pages. You can import them into your website and in a few minutes you can have a complete website up and running for free. Let me show you what we will cover in this tutorial. This is the website we will make. And when I scroll down, you see the header will change and the logo will change. We're going to create this from scratch. And the great thing about the Divi theme is that you can apply different headers on different pages. So right now it looks like this when I scroll down, but when I go to the contact page and I scroll down, it looks like that a little bit different. So you can assign different headers and different footers to any page in your website. Let's go to the homepage. We have a hero over here and if I want to adjust something, I just open the visual builder and I can just start typing over here or I can even make things bold or underlined. I can even give them a different color or I double click and then I can change the text over here, change the button, get started, I can change the image over here. Do something else and that's how easy it is if i don't like it command z or control z and i'm back if i want to adjust the background over here i can do that over here and this area where i can edit everything i can drag it around i can make it bigger i can stick it to the left and if i want to i can adjust those colors over here and the second one and then i can copy the background and I can paste it over here. That's how easy it is. If I don't like it, command Z, command Z. Also over here, I have a background. I can click over here. I can adjust a few things. So I can change the degrees. I can change the starting position, the ending position. So I can make it a line like that. Turn it around, make it a radial. Change the colors. And if I like the background, I can copy it, paste it somewhere else. Over here, I have a divider. If I want to change it, I go to design dividers at the bottom and I can change it to something like that. I can increase the height or something like that. Play around with the settings, repeat itself. And if I want to give it some more space, I can drag it just like that. That's how easy it is. Also over here, play around with the, the height, sizes of areas, spacings. So it's what you see is what you get editor. You can adjust everything from within the page builder. I will show you how to create a portfolio so you can showcase your work to visitors. And if we exit the visual builder, and I scroll down, you see that it animates. When we scroll, I can enable the visual builder again. I can click over here, drag it to the left, go to design, scroll down, go to animation, and I can make it slide in and I can decide from which angle, how long it should take before it arrives and the delay. And in that way you can have really nice animations. What else? Over here, I have this module with the heart. And if I click on the heart, I can change the color. Maybe I want to have a red heart. Like that. What I can do, I can copy the module styles and I can paste them over here like that or right mouse click, extend the blurb styles throughout the whole website or this section. So if I would have five more of those and I extend it, all those will get a red icon. With the Divi theme, it's really easy to speed up your workflow and make websites really efficiently. We're going to talk about branding and styling. If you see this area over here, this is a form. But if I would import a new form that is not designed yet, it would look like this. So I will show you how to go from something like this to this because styling and branding is really important in a website. We're going to talk about a blog post and about footers. Now I can click over here and now I can adjust the footer. And this whole page will be designed from scratch. And I will show you how you can optimize everything for all devices because more than 50% of the visitors on your website visit through a smartphone or through a tablet. So if your website is not optimized, it will scare people away. 
you see it looks great and also on the phone i'll show you how to optimize everything so it looks all beautiful when we have created this page from scratch you will have the knowledge to create outstanding pages using the divi visual builder so i will show you how to create something like this and as i said before we're going to create a blog post and with blog posts we can create the whole look and feel ourselves so this is a template i've created and we'll dive deeper well i'll show you more widgets over here so now we can go to our latest blog post and we can adjust everything to our wishes we can decide how this will look and what you see over here is a transparent header and if i go to the blog page to a certain blog post there's a white header so again for every page in the website we can assign different headers the same goes for case studies showcase your work now i'll show you how to create something like that and then we have the contact page and also all those pages are optimized for all devices when you follow all the steps in this tutorial and you apply them you will have the knowledge and the know-how on how to create professional websites using the divi theme and the great thing is when you have the divi theme you can use it on unlimited websites so even after watching this video you can become a web design agency and I have there are tons of stories of people that did that thanks to the tutorials I provide. When I go to fast for you, you can go to the settings of the YouTube video and change the playback speed to a slower one. Or you can click on the left arrow on your keyboard and go back five seconds in the video. In the description of the video, I have timestamps. So if you want to go to a certain part of the video, you can click on one of the timestamps and you go directly to that part of the video. Do you like what you see so far? Then please like this video. And now let's get started with the four steps we will take in order to create a beautiful and professional website. So there are four things we need to do. If you don't have it yet, I will show you how you can get your own domain name and web hosting and I can give you 70% discount. After that, we will install WordPress. Then we get the Divi theme. Then we will create our amazing website. If you already have a domain name and web hosting and you have already installed WordPress, I will show you on the screen right now where you need to go in order to continue with this tutorial. Now it's really time to get started. If you already have a domain name and web hosting, you can skip this part. If you don't have it, let's go to webhosting11.com, hit enter. You will be redirected to Name Hero. In my opinion, the best web hosting provider when it comes to quality and affordable prices. And when I take a look at web hosting, of course, I take a look at speed, I take a look at the support and I take a look at ease of use and Name Hero came out on top and I have an exclusive discount for you of 70% if you go for the first plan. So let's take a look at the plans by clicking here or if you feel like it, you can scroll down and here you see the four plans. If you just want to start and you're sure you want to go with one website, this is a great package for you. It's called the Starter Cloud. You pay $2.69 per month and you can have one website. You have one gigabyte of RAM, which is more than enough unlimited SSD storage. You have the cPanel, which helps you to install WordPress and a free and automated SSL. And that's what I really like. This saves you some time because automatically your website will be secure. With other web hosting providers, you need to do that manually. Here it is automatic. If you already have a website, you can migrate it for free to Name Hero and you have free light speed, which makes your website even faster. Well, I can tell you the websites at Name Hero are fast. That's for me the most important thing. Fast websites. I don't want to have slow websites. So if you get the startup cloud, you have one website and you can be assured it is blazing fast. If you think in the first year or in the first three years, you want to create multiple websites, then I would go with the plus cloud. You get 60% of discount and you can have up to seven websites and two gigabytes of RAM, which is more than enough to have seven websites. Again, unlimited SSD storage, and all the other benefits, which you also see over here. If you want to start a web design agency, I would go with the Turbo Cloud. You can have unlimited websites. That means that you only have to buy the domain, but you can host it under your Turbo Cloud package less than $8 per month. But this is not with SSD storage, but with NVMe storage, which is a new technology that makes your website even faster. This is already super fast, but this makes it even faster and that can be handy. So if you're planning to create a lot of websites, then this is the plan for you. And if you want to go all in the best of the best, then you can go for the Business Cloud. So if you're starting out, I would suggest you start with the Starter Cloud or with the Plus Cloud. You can always upgrade later. So if you're sure you want to go with one website, this package is great for you. If you know you want to create multiple websites in the first year or in the first three years, then I would go for the Plus Cloud. But again, you can always upgrade later. So I will start with the Plus Cloud and I scroll down and I click on Order Now. Now we need to get a domain name. 
you can have a .com domain name or a different extension. You can also search for it. Do they have a Dutch extension, for instance? Yes, they have that. And if you buy a .com domain, your website will be live immediately. That's what I really like about Name Arrow. You don't have to wait. Your website is live immediately. We don't have to take a break. So you need to search for a domain name that is available yet, of course. So you need to come up with a, with a brand name or with your own name. For instance, my brand name is Ferdy Korpsuk. That's my name. So I can also choose FerdinandDavid.com. See if it's still available. I click on search. And if it's not, you'll see that over here. But it is available. So I will go for Ferdinand David and I click on continue. So over here, we can choose our billing cycle. Do you want to go for one year? Then you pay $5.98 per month. For two years, $5.58 or $5.18. So depending on the billing cycle, you get more discount. Maybe you want to check things out. I suggest you go with one year and then after the first year, you can also extend your billing cycle for another three years and then again, you get a discount. So I would start with one year and then you don't need all this stuff. This can all be done using WordPress plugins. So I click over here on continue. And then it's really important to take ID protection. So you can check that over here. Why? Otherwise your data, your phone number, your email address will all be visible to everybody in the world and people will spam you. There are automatic bots that will send you emails about, let me create a logo or do SEO for you. You don't want that. So for just $6 per year, you can get ID protection and nobody can see your personal details. Then I click on continue and that's it. So we have the web hosting plus cloud, which normally costs $179 per year but you get a lot of discount and we pay less than $100 and then we can have up to seven websites in this package, which is amazing. This over here is a glitch. This is not uh, $20. So select that and you see the price stays the same and now you see the right price. So I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a uh, mandatory. You found out the, the Easter egg. I don't know, but um, I want to have this domain. I want to have this web hosting package and we can get started right away. So you see, we get a lot of discounts. So I'm a new user. So I will fill in my details over here. First name, last name, my email address, my phone number, my company name, the street address, my city where I live. I live in South Holland in the Netherlands. How did you find us? Well, probably through YouTube because you're watching this tutorial and you can have a support pin and that can be asked from you if you go to the support via phone or live chat and then choose four numbers. I have those over here and then I want to create a password and I confirm that password. I want to pay with credit card Stripe. So I fill in my details over here. Want superhero specials? Well, I definitely would turn this on because with Black Friday, for instance, you get an amazing discount. So I would turn it on and they do not spam you. They send only emails when it really benefits you. They need to agree to the terms and then we need to go to the checkout by clicking here and when you got this through my link, you don't pay more, you get a discount and I get credit for it. So it's a win-win situation. So I click over here on checkout. This sometimes can take a moment. It will check a few things. And there we are. The order is placed. Congratulations with your domain and web hosting. Now let's install WordPress. Now we can continue to the client area. So I click over here and there we are. So what we can do over here, we can maintain our domains our websites, our support tickets are billing. So if you have any question, you can click over here on support. You can open a ticket or go to your tickets and they usually reply really fast. So that's really nice. Here you can see an overview of all your domains, your cloud, we're going right there. So what I will do, I will click on my cloud over here because we're going to install WordPress. And then I click over here on web hosting plus cloud. Awesome. I log into the cPanel. Before you install WordPress, I want to configure a few things. I search for select and then I click on select PHP version. I click on it and then I can choose a PHP version and I want to choose 7.4. And I click on set as current. Okay. Then I go to the options. I scroll down a bit and I want to change the execution time. Let's say 150 and then over here, the memory limit. 128, the post max size, let's say 64 and the upload max file size. This is really low, two megabytes. Change it to 512 megabytes. Okay. 
I click over here. So I go back to the overview with applications. And now I want to search for WordPress. And then I click on WordPress Manager by Soft Techless. And now we can install a WordPress website on our domain. So I click on the blue button install. And here we can choose our domain. Awesome. And then over here I can choose HTTPS and maybe it will say, let's see, it will say nothing. It can say, hey, you don't have HTTPS. Still choose HTTPS because it will be there really soon. That will be automatically be created. And with HTTPS, as you see over here, your website becomes secure. That's really important for the search results, really important for your website. So with Name Hero, they take care of it. Then you can choose your domain name. If you have multiple domain names, you can choose one over here. And by the way, if you want to learn more about everything that Name Hero has to offer, you can go to YouTube and search for Name Hero tutorial. And I think I will be the number one. Yes. 10 months ago, I will create a new one because I record in 4K. But over here, a one and a half hours of everything you need to know for uh, Name Hero web hosting. And then over here, we can install WordPress on your domain name, forward slash, and then new or WP or test. And if you make this empty, which I suggest you do, then WordPress will be installed on the root directory on, on in my case, FerdinandDavid.com. They always use the latest version. And then over here, we can choose the name of our website. We'll do this later. Right now, I want to create a username, FerdyCorp, and I want to hide my password and create one. And I need to create an admin email fur at ferdycorp.com. And then I scroll down all the way. I don't need all that stuff and I click on install. And now, ladies and gentlemen, WordPress is installed on our brand new domain name with web hosting. So there it is. We can go to the back end and to the front end of our website. If I click over here, I go to the back end. That is where we can configure our complete website. It may look overwhelming. I will explain to you how everything works. Then I go back and I click over here and now I go to the front end of the website. So what I can do, I can close these two tabs. This is what people will see when they go to your website. It's called the front end. And then this over here is the back end. This is what you only can see when you're logged in. And no matter where you are in the back end or in the front end, when you're logged in, you see this bar over here, this top bar. This bar is only visible when you're logged in. So your visitors will not see this. But if I would go to this website, let's say in an incognito window, clicking over here. When people go to Ferdinand David at this moment, they will see this website. So we are live immediately and that's what I really like. Let's face it, it looks ugly. It looks, it looks ugly. Why do they do that? I don't know, but what I know, we can make it look better. But before we do that, let me show you how you can clean up your website and um, yeah, adjust a few important settings so we can get started the right way. So let me talk you through the front end and the back end. Starting with the back end. This is the place where we adjust our website. We can change the theme. We can create blog posts. We can add pages. We can monitor all the comments. We can add plugins, create new users, go through the settings of the website. And step by step, I will show you how everything works. And then when we change things over here at the back end, you will see the changes here at the front end. So first things first, I always like to make my website a little bit cleaner because this is a little bit overwhelming. So the first thing I do, I dismiss this message and all this stuff over here, I want to make it look cleaner. So first I go to my blog post over here and I want to remove it right now on my website. I see one blog post, which is this one. If I click on it, you go to that blog post and there's a comment and it looks really ugly. In my opinion, we're going to make it look so much better. But first I want to get rid of this blog post. I don't need it. So over here at the posts, I select all the blog posts. There's only one bulk actions move to the trash. I click on apply. Then I go to the trash and I empty the trash. The same goes with pages. There are a few pages. I don't need those. I select them all by clicking here. I can also select them individually. Book actions, move to the trash, apply. Then I go to the trash over here. And again, I can remove them permanently one by one or empty the trash. Now I go to the dashboard. 
I see all those tabs over here. I want to collapse them or even better, get rid of them. So I go to the screen options and I uncheck them all. So I don't see unnecessary stuff over here. Later, we're going to add a few things over here, but right now it's not necessary. Then I go to the plugins. Okay, two plugins, they're not um, active, so I can click on delete. If you want to delete a plugin, you need to deactivate it first. So if I would activate it, I cannot delete it right now. I first need to deactivate it and then I can delete them. Okay, then I want to go to settings, permalinks. Right now, when we have a blog post over here, you see this, my domain name, and then the date. I don't want that. That's ugly. I, I just don't want that. I want to have my domain and then the title of the blog post, which is in this case, hello world. How can I do that here at settings permalinks? I select post name. That's the best option in order to be found in Google and other search engines. So I save the changes. I do it twice just because I feel like so. Sometimes it's good to follow your feelings. You know, yesterday I felt really sad and uh, I woke up and I forgot um, my favorite color. I forgot what it was. <laughs> so I asked my wife. <laughs> Just kidding. And now, if I would refresh this, uh, and this blog post doesn't exist anymore, but it would look like this and it looks much better. If I go to my website, ferdicorp.com and I go to tutorials, how to make a WordPress website, it will say ferdicorpsic.com, how to make a WordPress website for free. So that's what I like to use and not this or this or this. Ugh, I don't want that. Okay, so far, so good. Now I want to go over here to my profile and then we can change the look and feel of our backend. I always use the default one. I'm just used to it. So um, I keep it with that. What I can do right now, you see Howdy Ferdy Corp. And then when I write a blog post, it will say the author is Ferdy Corp. I don't want to show my username. I want to show my real name. So my first name is Ferdy. My last name is Corpus Hook. And then over here at display name publicity, I can choose the combination Ferdy Corpus Hook. And what you will see over here, Howdy Ferdy Corpus Hook. If you want to have an image over here, you can scroll down. You can create a profile picture on Gravatar. So if I open this in the new tab, you can sign in. And if you sign in with the same email address you use over here at contact info, then you can upload an image in this account. And then when you use the same email address over here as over here in your Gravatar account, there will appear an image over here. A lot of over here is in one sentence. So I normally use this email address for my websites. And this email address is also active here at Gravatar. And when I have that, so when I save this and I confirm it, my profile picture that I have on Gravatar will appear. I scroll down all the way. I can create a new password if I want to. I click on update profile. And now I need to confirm my email. And I have done that. And now you see this image over here, which is from Gravatar. So when I place a blog post and people can see my, my profile picture, this one will appear. And if they see my profile picture, I can also say something about myself over here. So if you're, so uh, I love to teach people about WordPress, affiliate marketing and WooCommerce. My style is being honest, straight to the point and optimistic. I don't know. I'm not the best text writer, but then we have something over here. And then I use Grammarly to fix all my errors because there are a lot. I'm from the Netherlands. My first language is Dutch. So uh, Grammarly is helping me. Thank you, Grammarly. You're welcome. Huh? Did he talk back? No. <laughs> okay. Whatever. So this is how it looks right now. Really ugly. But as I said, we're going to make it look so much better. So one more thing, go to the site settings in general. And here we can give our website a site title. Really important for the search results and a tagline. We're going to talk about this later. Really important that you have HTTPS over here, that your website is secure. Also over here, 
your administration email address and what we can do over here we can change the language of our website to a different language if you want to and we can change the time zone so if i'm from the netherlands and i want to schedule a few blog posts it's important that my time zone is correct so i can use one of those and google which one is which one or i can scroll up and over here i can select the place where i live or close by so i can choose amsterdam and then i can change the date format uh, depending on where you live it's it's different you can choose one you can create your own and you'll see how it will look over here i like this one and then the time format i use this one am and pm using capitals over here and also here you can have your custom time format my week starts on monday and i save the changes so if we take a look at our website it looks ugly now ladies and gentlemen it is time to install the divi theme the most popular wordpress theme in the world and when you get the divi theme you get so much more let me show you so in order to make this beautiful we're going to use an amazing theme called the divi theme in order to get it let's go to 30corp.com forward slash divi hit enter and what you see over here, 188 people purchased the Elegant Theme subscription in the last 24 hours. And for 24 hours, you get 10% of discount. And after 24 hours, unless you know how to remove cookies, it is gone. So when we get the Divi theme, what do we actually get? Well, of course, we do get the Divi theme, which is the most popular WordPress theme and website builder for WordPress in the world. And it will enable you to create an amazing website. And of course, in this tutorial, I will show you step by step how you can do that. Besides that, you get the extra magazine theme, a theme that can enable you to create an amazing news website. I have a tutorial about it. You can go to YouTube, search for extra theme tutorial, and it's not number one yet. Over here it is three weeks ago. What else do you get? The Divi Builder. So you can even use a different theme and still use the Divi Builder, which also is included in the Divi theme. Then there's the Bloom email opt-in plugin that will enable you to get more opt-ins to your email list. And there's the Monarch social media plugin that will enable you to show real time how many followers you have on different social media platforms. And it enables you to let visitors on your website share the content of your website. So let's take a look at the pricing. We scroll down. Let me close this. We get 10% of discount in the next 24 hours. And there are two plans you have the yearly access. So for $80 per year, you can get access to all those tools and you can use it on unlimited websites and you can have updates for a year. You can have premium support for a year. And if you somehow don't like it within 30 days, you can have your money back or what you can do. You can go for lifetime access, a one-time fee of $224 and then you get all the tools, all the products. You can use it on unlimited websites and you get lifetime updates, lifetime premium support and lifetime unlimited website usage and again if you don't like it you can get your money back within 30 days you only pay once i paid it six years ago and i still can use all the tools and when there are new tools or new updates i have access to them at once even though i paid 224 dollars six years ago this is crazy so really simple if you want to use the divi theme or the extra theme or one of the tools or all the tools for longer than three years i would go with lifetime access Take the 10% of discount and then you can use all those tools on unlimited websites of yourself, but also on websites of your clients. And then through this tutorial, you can see how it works. If you really, really, really don't like it, somehow you can get your money back. I tried it already and they gave me my money back. So I click on sign up today and I need to create a username and I love creating usernames. You know, you can choose whatever you want. I can choose this one. But maybe it's already taken. No, I can choose. I, I choose um, Fur 30 Corp. I don't know why. Just because I like it. My email address is 30 fur at 30 corp.com. I need to create a password. So my first name, my last name. I'm from the Netherlands. And that's why I see a uh, vet included Texas. But uh, since I have a vet number, I can fill it in over here and then it will be subtracted again. Nothing. You need to pay with credit card and I agree to the terms of a service and I don't want to get updates via email. So I click on complete registration and it says welcome to elegant themes and we can log in over here. Remember me. I always like to be remembered. Okay, let's continue. Login. 
And now we can download all the stuff we have over here. It all looks really slick, really nice. The extra theme, the Bloom plugin, the Mona plugin. I have tutorials about all of those tools, but what I want to download over here is the Divi theme. So I click here on download the Divi theme. There it goes. And now I go to my website, to the backend, to appearance, themes, and I click on add new, upload theme, and then I drag it over here. And then I click on install now. Awesome, now I can activate it. I can close this. I want to remove all the themes I do not use by clicking on theme details when I hover over it. Delete, okay. Theme details, delete, okay. And there we have it. Great. So now when I go to the website, it looks like this. It looks a bit better, but we're gonna make it look so much better. So let me do a few things and then we're really going to create our first page using the Divi theme. But before I go to the back end, I can close this now. I go to Divi over here, theme options. And if you want to, you can upload your logo. I have tutorials on how to create a logo. You can go to YouTube and search for logo tutorial 30 or create a logo 30. And when you hit uh, type 30 after that, you see a few different tutorials on how to do it with Photoshop with another free tool and with a free tool using a free transparent background, which can be really handy. So you can watch that. I have my logo made in two minutes uh, using Photoshop. So I click on upload, select files, and then I want to upload the colored logo, the white logo and the fave icon. By the way, if you want to download these files using the tutorial, you can go to ferdycorp.com. Then go to tutorials, Divi, scroll down and here download the images I use in the tutorial and you can get along. So I want to use this image right now, the colored one as a logo. Great. And the next thing I want to do, I want to make use of a few colors. You don't have to do this yet, but if you have a few colors you use in your website, that has everything to do with your branding. You can change them over here and then in the whole website they are at your fingertips. So I go to my notes and also those colors can be found in the document with all the images that you can download from my website. So I use this dark blue color. I want to paste it here Then I want to use the light blue color. And then this one all white. Copy paste because I don't use other, other colors because you don't want to use too much colors in your website. And then I want to change the red one by six times three. That will be the color of the text in my website. Okay, perfect. I click on save the changes. And now when I go to my website, it looks like this. We have a big logo and a homepage, which is this page over here. And that's what we will configure. We're going to create a few pages we want to have in our website. So I hover over my blog and I want to go to the theme customizer by clicking here. And then we go over here to menus and I can create my first menu by clicking here on this button. And I call this one the main, no, the main menu. And I want it to be the primary menu so it will appear over here. And then I click on next. And now I can add pages by clicking on this blue button add items. So I click over here, I can create a new page and the first one is the home page. I click on add. What else do I want to have on my website? Well, it depends of course on what kind of website you want to create. I want to create a website where I help people to elevate their business to the next level using their online presentation by creating new branding, a marketing strategy and better web design. But first I want to say something about myself. I always like to say about instead of about me or about us, just about. And I add it and it will be added over here. And if I would say command minus, you see it will appear over here at the right, which is nice. The next one is services. I want to offer multiple services or a three in one service. And then I want to highlight all those services. So I create three pages for them. The first one is branding. The second one is marketing. 
And the third one is web design. Then, if you want to, you can create a blog on your website. You can have a portfolio. And you can have a contact page. And what I do, I don't like to copy others, but what you can do, if you want to create a marketing company, you can search for marketing company <laughs> uh, Amsterdam. And you can go to the ads or skip them. Click over here. We grow brands. Okay. Services, expertise, our work, tips about us, contact. So you can get inspiration from it if you want to. Don't have to copy it, but that's what you can do. And if you click over here, for instance, I want to change this back to case studies. I think that looks, sounds better. And if I'm finished, I click on publish and there it is. But I want to do a few things. I want to go to services and then below services. I want to bring this a little bit to the right. So I click and I drag it over here and then it becomes a sub item like that. So now I have three sub items over here. That's better. And I don't want to have the homepage over here because that will be our uh, homepage. So when you uh, want to go to the homepage, you always click on the logo. That's common knowledge. If you go to any website or let's say apple.com and I go to a certain page, I want to go back to the homepage. How do I get there? Just click on the logo. So uh, instead of uh, spending thousands of dollars on marketing, I just can learn from the best by not using a homepage over here. Then I go back from the main menu and back over here to the homepage settings. And then I can change this from our latest post. So right now our homepage shows latest post to a static page. Now we can select the homepage. And if you want to go for a post page, I can select the blog page. Okay. Almost there. I would like to go to the general settings site identity. And right now we see a fave icon over here. And again, if I go to apple.com or let's say uber.com or uber, you see this icon over here, it's called a fave icon. Also here, the apple fave icon, the apple logo. That's what I also want to do. So site icon, I want to place it here at the site identity and I use this one. Select, I don't to crop it and now it's shown over here amg advantage media group then over here is the site title well when you create a site title is really important for the search result because if you go to google.com and you search for web design rotterdam you skip the ads but you see web design in the title this is the title which we can create over here Web Design Rotterdam. So I search for Web Design Rotterdam and what you see is Web Design Rotterdam. So it's really important Web Design Rotterdam, Web Design Rotterdam, Web Design Rotterdam, Web Design Rotterdam, etc. So it's really important that the term you want to be found on is at the beginning of your site title. So I want to be found on Grow Your Business. And then a pipe, it's called a pipe, and then I say at Vantage media group so first your your keyword grow your business or marketing rotterdam or amsterdam depending on where you live and then there's a tagline uh, which can show a little bit more about your website we help companies small and big to get more business and serve more people Interesting. Publish. So now when I close this, this is live. This is how it looks. I can uh, adjust a few things over here and then we're going to take a look at the homepage. Later, we're going to create an advanced header. Right now, this is a simple one. So one more time, I go to the theme customizer. So I go to the header and navigation. I go to the primary menu bar and I can make this full width. If I want to, I can hide the logo somehow. I have no idea why you would do that, but hey, it's a possibility. How cool is that? <laughs> we can change the logo height so I can make it a little bit smaller. And also here I can use the arrows to make it smaller. Then the text size, 
make it bigger, smaller, letter spacing. But what I want to do, I want to um, use capitals. And I want to use a different color for the text, which will be this one. And then I bring this up because then it is not transparent. If I bring it down, it will be completely transparent and then it's gone. But I want it to be visible. Okay. I need to click out outside of this area. Then the background color is fine. The drop down menu background color. It looks like this. That looks fine. And I want to change the active link color to this light blue one or the normal blue one. And also this line color to this blue one. And I'm happy with this. Close it. So right now we, we created a simple logo. And for now that's perfectly fine. And what I want to do, if I want to edit this page using the Divi Builder, I can enable the Visual Builder. If you don't see that, just click on edit the page. And then over here, click on use the Divi Builder. It is time to get to know the Divi Builder. And the biggest portion of this tutorial is about the Divi Builder because that is the tool we use to create amazing pages. And not only that, when you learn how to create a page we're going to make and we're really going to take a long time to create this page because I want to show you everything there's to know about the Divi Page Builder. When you learn that, you will also learn how to create pages yourself. So I'm excited. What I will do, I will first show you the basics on how things work with sections and modules and columns and rows and then we start to build our page are you ready i hope you are because we're gonna get started and then i can edit the page using the divi builder i close this we can get a tour but i don't need it so i click on start building and then we see three options over here we can build from scratch we can choose a pre-made layout and we can clone an existing page well since we're getting started, I want to build a site from scratch and show you how to work with the Divi Builder. So I click on start building and now we see this area over here. I want to close it and I want to start from scratch. So are you ready to learn how to work with the Divi editor, the visual builder? Well, if you are, uh, then continue. If you're not, then do whatever you need to do in order to become prepared or ready. Yes. So I give you a minute to reflect on yourself, take a look in the mirror, ask yourself the question out loud, am I ready for this? Because this will change your life. Are you ready for your life to be changed? Those are some serious um, questions. It's only one question. Okay, let's uh, start. Let's get started. I click on the plus over here. And what I see, I can insert a new section, a regular one, a specialty one, and a full width one. If I choose regular, I can choose a few columns. It's called a row, but it has columns. So I prefer to call them columns. This one has one column, two columns, three columns, five columns, uh, unequally divided, like a small column at the left and a big one at the right. Three, four, no, just kidding. It's also three, <laughs> five, <laughs> no, four. Oh, come on. I will leave it. Why not? I, I normally use um, those three, but I can also click on the X. And then I can remove it and I can remove it and I can choose it again if I want to, but maybe I want to insert a specialty row so I can close this again, click on the blue plus, and then there's a specialty with even more complex setup. So if I would choose one of those, what I can do now, I can insert modules in all those areas. So here are two columns and then here is one. And I can add something in it. And then we can adjust the content. We can adjust the design, how it will look, the colors, the fonts, the sizes. And then we have advanced and we can add custom CSS, add conditions, create transitions, change positions, add scroll effects. And we'll talk about all of this. And every module has their own content settings. So here you see toggle icon, link and background. If I click on the plus and I add an image you can search for it image you see image link background admin label so depending on the module there are different settings here at the content if i hover over it i can remove them again remove them so that's how it works you have a section which is a specialty section or a normal section in that section you can have different columns and in those columns 
you can have modules. And if you take a look over here, accordion, audio, bar counter, block, blurbs, login, map, a lot of different modules. And using those three elements, the sections, the columns, and the modules, we can create beautiful websites, make them optimized for all devices, and create amazing websites. So I can close this. Let me show you a few other options. I click on the plus. I can have a full width area uh, with code or a header, a map, an image, a menu, portfolio. So you can add a lot of things. We'll talk about it. I close this for now. I want to show you a little bit more. So I click on the plus regular and then three columns. And I want to go for a blurb. So I add it over here. So I see over here, I can change the text. So I can say marketing and it will be changed over here. I can also change it here, the text. So I just select it. And it's a great thing about the Divi builder, the visual builder. It is a front end editor. So I can see all the, everything that I'm changing. So I can, uh, so I can change this text. And if I want to, I can select a word and make it bold. So I can select this word, make it bold or underlined or give it a different font or color. So let me see, let me select it again. Bold, bold. So that's what I can do. And then over here in this area helps you to adjust the content of the website. So um, right now I selected this module. So over here, I can change the title, the text. I can change the image or use an icon. So I can use this over here, but that's not all. I can also change the background. So maybe I want to have a black background, but then I need to make the text white. So I can click over here, scroll down a bit. Maybe I'm overwhelming you. That's okay. That's also what I had in the beginning. Step by step, I'll show you how everything works. I can go to the text area, make the text light. Then I think there's not much spacing. So I can go to the spacing area and I can increase the margin. Margin is the spacing outside of an element and then padding is the spacing within an element. So right now we increase the outside area. And if I go over here, and I connect the top and the bottom and I increase it. You see, I get more space over here. The same goes over here. If I say 20, so that looks nice. Now, if I say check and I can go to the row settings over here and over here, I can also give this area a background. So let's say a gradient with color one and color two. Then I can change it. I want to show you so much things already, but step by step, you will learn how everything works. But now this black background is, is on the edge over here. I want to have some space so I can do two things or I go over here to the module and I go to design and spacing. And then over here at the left and the right, I say 16. So there's spacing or I go to this row area, design, spacing, and then at the padding, I can say 20, 20, 20, and 20. So there's also more space. Again, maybe I'm overwhelming you. No problem. I will show you how it works. And uh, this was the row area. And now we have another area. It's a section. So we have sections. In those sections, we have different columns. Those columns are uh, in a container called a row. And then we have the modules. So over here, I can also change the background and I can use an image. Why not? It will be really ugly, but hey, it's possible. Also a gradient here. So a lot of layers, the section, the row, the different columns and the modules. And every module has their own style. So this looks ugly, I know, but I just want to introduce you to what is possible using the visual builder within the Divi theme. And then really easy, I can duplicate things. I can drag them around. And since I'm talking about these kind of things, um, let me show you a little bit more. I can click over here and I can save it. 
Then if I want to, I can exit the visual builder and what you'll see, it will look the same as when we had the visual builder enabled. So that's the great thing about the visual builder. You will see exactly what you're creating. Since we have this area, I can remove this one. I just hover over here. I can duplicate it. I can change the settings. I can move it around so I can drag it here below. And if I remove it, I can say command or control S and then I save it. And what I also can do when I prefer hold command, click on exit visual builder. And then I see the real life result over here and the editing area over here. And they look exactly the same, but here you can see the final result of what people will see when they enter your page. Okay. What else? Since we open this area, we see a lot of options. Well, maybe you like it over here below. I like it, but if you don't like it, just drag it over here. If you open it, wow, that looks even better in my opinion or here or here or here, whatever you want, you will get used to it. Uh, I prefer this one. I always use it. And it's, yeah, it's beautiful. But if you prefer, you can bring it here. And that's also really nice. If I open this, there are a few shortcuts. Over here, I'm in the desktop view. That's what I see. If I want to edit things for the tablet, I can click over here or over here for the mobile. I can click on the plus then I see a bigger overview. I zoom out a little bit actually, and I can see the wireframe. So now I see I have a section with a row with three columns and I have a blurb over here and I have a blurb over here. So sometimes I don't know why it can be hard to drag something over here. Well, it's working now, but if it's not, I can go to the wireframe and then it's easier. And if I want to go toggle between those, I don't know if that's the right word, but if I want to switch between those, I can say control or command plus plus minus, 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 minus. And when you get to know how to work with this tool, man, it becomes so intuitive and easy. That's what I really like about the Divi theme. So I can toggle between all those options. And normally I like to stick with this one, the desktop view over here. A few more things we can do. I can click on the plus. I can import a pre-made layout so I can click over here. If there's something I like, I can click on it and I can use that layout. We'll talk about it later. I can save this layout to the library. I can give this a uh, practice and I can create a category. And if I have a category, I can select it over here by filling in a few words and then I can save it to the library. I can export it, use it on different websites. I can start all over from scratch by clicking here. Of course, they will ask you if you're sure. Well, I'm not over here. We have the settings of this page title, the excerpt, that's something people will see when they Google your website and it will appear in the search results. We can have a featured image for every page and we can do split testing. We'll talk about it later. And then over here, if I made a mistake, I can go back. So maybe I'm like, I want to start over again or go somewhere else. And if I saved it already, then I'm screwed. I don't know if I'm offending people by saying that word, but um, I hope I'm not. I don't mean that. But um, no, you're not. If you save it and you exit the visual builder and you enable it again and you're like, hey, but I like the old uh, thing better. Uh, what you need to do, you need to go and edit the page. Then you need to go to revisions. So I can go back to something. Uh, 32 minutes ago. And if I restore this revision, I can edit it again. And then I have this because this is what I've made before. And then I can, um, adjust things and stuff. And I can also remove it. Then I can save it command S and then I can edit the page again and go back to something that happened 24 seconds ago. I restore it, update it, and I edit the page with the Diffy Builder and there it is. It's back. So that's what you can do. And also here you can export this page at once, or you can import a page at once and you can let it replace the existing content or uh, download the backup of this area. 
before you import it. And here I can select a file on my computer. Okay, a few more things. Really nice. You can search over here for uh, anything. So maybe you want to insert something or go to a certain page. I can export things. I can view things. And I can search for that over here. So maybe I want to import accordion. So I can say insert accordion, accordion module. Bam. Where do I want to do that? Over here. There it goes. Uh, I personally do not use it, but hey, it's an option. This is what I do use because uh, as I said before, we can see this wireframe. But if you want to speed up your workflow, you can also open the layers. And there I see this section. In that section, I have a row with three columns and in those columns I have a blurb. So if I want to select something really easy, I just click over here and there it goes. I can drag this around since we're talking about this area. I can make it float like it does now. I can make it um, smaller. I can make it bigger. And depending on the screen, um, uh, you can see what option is best for you. You can also make it really big, make it smaller again and then put it to, to the left. And then what will happen, it will push the website to the right. And now I can edit everything over here from the left. And if you check things, it will be gone. So then you see the whole result again. Then you can go to the layers and select things or just select them over here. And then it will appear at the left again and you can increase the width. So if you have a big screen, you can make it float, you can make it stick to the left or you can do both. So sometimes you like to work over here on a full width screen. And sometimes you prefer to stick it to the left. It's all up to you. And what I like is that there are so many options with that. So having said that, I think that's pretty much it. Of course, you can get help with videos and all that stuff. You see the shortcuts, uh, undo, redo, save the page, uh, exit the visual builder. So it's all about speed. So I can say command S and I save it. If I say command E, I exit the visual builder. And then I can enable the Visual Builder again. So if you want to know more shortcuts, click over here and go to shortcuts, or you can take a look at those videos. So knowing that, I think you're ready to get started creating the first area of your website. And of course, uh, we all create different websites. But the principles I will show you will help you to create your own website with different text, different layouts, different images. And I hope this video will benefit you a lot. If that's the case already, Please like this video, that would help me out a lot. And if you want to subscribe for more upcoming tutorials about WordPress, about Diffy, about Elementor, about affiliate marketing, e-commerce, and probably more. So feel free to do that, or maybe you just want to support me. I'm after subscribers. <laughs> that's what makes me excited. So that's why I do my best to create a lot of tutorials. Yes, okay, I can click over here, remove all the content, and then start from scratch. I close this, I click on the plus. And what I want to create is a full width area with a text, call to action, and an image. So I can scroll down and see what I want to have. I can have a full width header. This will do, that's great for me. Well, header, no slider. If you want to have a slider with different backgrounds, different text things, you can use a slider. I'm happy with this one, full width header. So I click on it and by default, there is a style. I like to keep things organized, so I'm happy with this right now. And first I want to remove this area. Then I say Command S, over here Command R, and this is our website. Uh, amazing. So let's configure it. What I see over here is this blue color. Well, I don't like that. Why is there a blue color? Why is it not pink or purple or orange? Why is it this blue color? Well, we need to go over here to the theme customizer. Then we can go to the general settings and the layout settings. And then over here we see this theme accent, accent color. I choose uh, this one because that is my theme accent color. And since we are here, let me uh, say command E because now I know that you will exit the visual editor. This is the width of our website, but my website is zoomed in. So if I say command minus Minus, this is the width of my website. I think it should be wider because there's a lot of space over here and I want to use it. How can we do that over here? It's also smaller now. We can increase the width of our website. You see, it will be applied over there. So how about 1140? That's the width I want to use. It's easy to read like that on the screen. 
I just like that amount of pixels in the width. So I click on publish, close this. Okay, and before I want to edit this page, I click on command plus, plus until it's 125 again. And then I want to enable the visual builder. Close this. So now it's uh, that background, the different background, which is install in the style, in the branding of our website. So it's a module, so I can adjust this area and there it goes again. So my title goes here. I need to create a title and I want to say, grow your business with ease. I want to create a website where my company can help people to increase their company by helping them to get more business, more clients. I can have a subtitle. I can have a button over here and I want to say view work or case studies. Well, I like view work. And then here below I can type a text and it will be displayed over here. So I start typing. That's my goal. I want to help companies, big companies, small companies to get more clients and serve them better. Because if you serve your clients in a great way, you'll get more clients. So it's, uh, it's, uh, so it's helping each other more clients, helping them better, which will give you even more clients. Then over here, since we're talking about a full width header, I can adjust all the content over here. So we made a title, the button text, body text, and we can add an image. So I want to add a header image over here. I click on upload files. You can see this file in the folder you downloaded. If you want to play along with the same images I use, I created this image. And then what I want to do, I want to remove all the dashes, copy the title, paste it in the alt text and paste it in the description. And maybe you see something else over here. If you have a different image, well, I always would rename your images. It would be even better if I would say, um, advantage case study or advantage Amsterdam. If my company was in Amsterdam, because if people search for 30 corpus hook and they somehow want to go to images, you see those images over here. If I click on this one, I click on this one and I click on the image address and I paste it. I see that 30 is in the name. Well, this is not good and this is not good, but still I'm found. Uh, if people search for something, they also can go to images. So what you see people that do not rename things, you made an image on your phone or whatever, it can look like this because those people did not rename their images. As you see, MG. So, um, link address, paste it image. Oh no, sorry. That's the wrong, but, uh, the title of this image is IMG 0001 and you want to be found on Google. So never use that. Always rename it and then use relevant words. So it could be even more relevant. I would actually like to say to this image, you are media agency, Amsterdam case study. Then I upload the image and there it is. Okay. So far, so good. We can link this all. The button of the first link is case studies, or I click on the plus. And I want to search for a certain page and then I scroll down. And I select the portfolio, it's a portfolio page. So it will link to the portfolio page. This is a button over here in the same window. Then I can have a background, which is this one. I can also change it to a gradient. So the first color is this one. And the second color is this one. Nice gradient. We can change the gradient type to radial. We can change the starting position and the ending position. So you can create something like that. Again, uh, we, we can change the direction. So you can change something like, uh, create something like this. Well, actually it's pretty nice. Change the starting position, change the ending position, create something like this. So you can be really creative. I would like to have a linear one. And also here you can make it one line and then change the direction. I like to make the direction 90. And then starting position here and the ending position there. I can place 
a, a, a gradient over an image. So over here, I can upload an image. So let me upload a file. Okay. If I want to find an image for free, I go to pixabay.com. I search for city or skyline. I can download this one for free. In this resolution, I'm not a robot. Where are the bicycles? <laughs> uh, skip. Traffic lights. Okay, and then what should I do? Of course, I should rename it. So I say Amsterdam Media or Marketing Advantage Media Group. Okay, what I can do, I can make the file smaller, but it's okay. You know, let's try it. Let's go all in. Tiny PNG. I drag it over here. I just want to show you as much as possible. At the same time, I do not want to make the tutorial too long. So, but I, I don't want, to, I, I, I just want to help you. Okay. This is such a small increase. It's a, it's, I don't want it, but sometimes you can decrease it from two megabytes to 400 megabytes. And that's a big decrease. So I can select the file. I go to downloads. There it is open. And again, copy paste and paste upload the image now you see it over there and then if i turn this on it can be mixed but i still don't see the background that's because i need to click on the color and then i need to decrease the opacity ah wow not too much if i check this i see the real live result i can say command or control s to save it and then I want to take a look at the style because this is not appealing to me. So I click over here again and now I want to make it float because I want to see how it will look. So I can make it smaller over here. How does this area look? Okay. I go to the design tab and then I need to go to text, but I also can click here and I go immediately to H1, grow your business with ease. And then I want to search for a font. And if you want to know how to find the right font, you can go to fonts.google.com. And what you can do, you can uh, type in grow your business with ease. You can filter things and then you can just scroll over here. If you see something you like, you can use it. Well, I like Nunito, Nunito, I don't know. So I search for that one. And there it is. Okay. I can make it capitals. I can make it align somewhere else. I can change the text color. I can make it bigger. That's what I want. I want it to be on two lines. Grow your business with ease. Let's make it 50. Okay. Then this text is a little bit weird below that. So I also want to make that a little bit bigger. So I click over here, body text. Again, I can do the same things and I can change the body text. Let's make it 20. And then I want to have a, a little bit more line height, not too much arrow down. Yes. And then the button, I can click over there. I go to the button area. And if I collapse this, what I see all those areas over here, I can adjust everything. The image, the overlay, the text, the title text, the spacing the filters, the transformation, the animation can all be done over here. So let me make it a little bit bigger again. I want to go to, to button one. I want to give it a custom styling. So I click over here, the button text size is okay. The color is also okay. I can have a different background, Well, I want that. So I click over here and I select this blue background over here. Okay. Then the border width, I don't want to have a border, so I decrease it to zero. If I had a border, I could give it a different color. I could change the radius. I can still change the radius, but now I don't see it that well. So what I also can do, I can go to this area, make it the lighter button because this is the same background color as this darker one. And I want to see the background. Now I see it better. 
So um, let me decrease that. I want it to be zero, just flat square. Letter spacing, yeah, let's increase it. 2.5 and the font also Nunito. And then the font of the text, let me go back. I want it to be open sans. It's already the case. When I hover over it, I see a nice animation. That's what I like. And uh, I'm happy with the result. I can give it a different icon when I hover over it. I can make the, the icon appear always. So now it's there permanently, but I want to see a hover. So when I hover over it, it becomes a different color. How can I do that? I need to scroll up. It's a little bit hidden, but I need to go to the background color over here. And then I need to click on this mouse. So normally it will look like this. And when you hover over it, it can change. So now if I change the color to the darker one, okay, and I go back to the normal one, you see it becomes dark. So um, I can play around with that. I can also go to the border width, click over here. And when I hover over it, there is one pixel and that color should be white. So let me save it, exit the visual builder in a new tab. Now that happens. I personally do not like it, but for me that the background is enough. So I go back, I can also click here. And then I go to the background over here. It's okay. But for the, this is not what I want when I hover over it. Turn it off, save, refresh, let me close this. Perfect. Grow your business with these. We help companies from startups to enterprises to get more clients and serve them better. I think. It looks great what we have made so far, but it's really important to optimize your website for all devices, for tablets, for smartphones. Why? Because more than 50% of the visitors on the internet go to the internet through their tablet or through their mobile phone. So if your website is not responsive, it's not mobile or tablet ready, you'll scare people away. So let me show you how to optimize your website for all devices. Well, that's what we can check over here. So remember, I can say command plus, and then I see how it looks. And I think this text is really big and the image is a little bit small over here. So again, I can click over here, maybe bring it to the side. And um, if I go to design and I hover over here, what I see, I see it will inherit, inherit the, the size of the desktop screen. So over here again, I can uh, go hover over here and then I click and then I see here it is 50 and here it's inheriting. 50 from the desktop because I did not give this a different value. So if I make this 30 over here and go back to the desktop style, here it is 50, here it is 30, and over here it's also 30 because it's inheriting the most recent uh, style. So 50, 30, and if I change nothing, it will stay 30. Okay, so far so good. Let's go back to the status. Um, This is great. This can be a bit smaller in my opinion. So I go to the body text size again, 20, and then over here, 16. And then the same with the button. I can make it smaller, but actually I like it the way it is. So um, that's okay. And then I can go to the smartphone, grow your business with ease. It looks great with the image. But what I don't like is that you see a city over here and you don't see it. It's, it's a lot of blue. So I can uh, go to the settings of the background. Content, background, and over here for the smartphone, I can change it. Let me go over here. See, I'm on the smartphone and there I can also make that a bit more visible. So if I go to the big screen, I see it's uh, uh, a little bit transparent over here and not over here. It's opaque. Is that the right word? Then I go to the tablet 
same thing. And then I go to the smartphone and it's visible completely. So, so far so good. This looks great. We're going to make this look better in the future of this tutorial. But right now we have something to work with. And uh, I think so far we are doing a great job using the Divi theme. Grow your business with ease. We help companies from startups to enterprises to get more clients and serve them better. And if you take a look, this is within the visual editor. It's outside of, if you see two differences, this dash is a little bit longer on the real website. Over here, it's a little bit shorter. And this area is bigger and there's a lot of larger space. So how can we fix that? Click over here and then here. Scroll down all the way, but in the bottom one area, and then we see margin and padding. And at the padding right, I want to increase it. So let's see how that will look. I would say 50. Command S. Refresh. Yeah, you know, this is a little bit shorter than this. So one more thing, and that's that's whole part of the, the uh, part of the whole process. Let's say 44. Okay, but there's more we can do. There's a plus over here, and that means we can add another full width area. And what I prefer to do is a portfolio with a lot of items, but there's a problem. We don't have a portfolio yet. So what we can do instead, let me remove this. I can create a new area by clicking on the plus. And right now it's purple. It doesn't matter that it's purple. That has everything to do with the kind of full width area we have over here. That is purple. If I were to create a new area, which is regular. So let's do this one with a button. Okay. And now I would create a new area. It will be blue. So it doesn't matter. But right now it's purple because of this area. So I click on the plus. I go to regular and I want to add an area with five columns. Why? I want to display a few logos of companies I work for. There's only one thing. If I go to image and I click on the image and I go to upload files and you take a look at the folder which you can download, you see logos, these or these, but those are white. So if I upload a white logo, Uber, and I upload the image, you don't see it. So what I can do, I can click over here on the section settings. I go to the background and I can give this a certain background. But now I think it does not look really nice in combination with this top area. So what I can do over here to make them one area, I go to the module, I go to the background, and I remove the background and over here, I remove this area. So now I have the city. So I click over here and I remove this area. I go back to one of those. So if I want to have one color, I choose this one and now it aligns. It looks like it's one area, but maybe, yes, maybe, maybe I prefer the gradient. But there's one thing over here. The gradient is not fully opaque. It's a little bit transparent. So I can bring it back, choose color one, this one, the dark one, and then the lighter one. I scroll down 90 degrees. That's what I like from the left to the right. I bring this to zero and I bring the second one to 100 and I don't need the gradient. Then I need to make sure if everything is still correct the other devices no also here I choose this color perfect so now if i go over here to the section below and i go to the background i can remove this one i can go to the gradient select color one select color two bring this to 90 degrees and now looks perfectly the same. There's a lot of space over here and then we'll take a look at it later. First, I want to click on the plus, search for an image, select it and I select the second image, which is 
SpaceX. So what I can do, I can download all those images, but I don't want to use the colored ones. So I can hold command or control. And I already uploaded the Uber one. Open them. And if I don't need this, I click on delete permanently. I thought maybe I can. Okay, let me let me keep it. But I just wanted to show you how we can delete it. So now you know. Uh, the second one was SpaceX. And no, I do not really work for those companies. It's just for the purpose of the tutorial. The third one, Sony. The fourth one, the Metaverse. The fifth one, Coca Cola. Coca Cola is the reason that when you see this video, the first few seconds, I look like I look because I drink it a little bit too much. Okay, what we can do over here when you hover. You see this blue area, I can decrease it. It's just a, a shortcut of removing padding and margin. Because if I go over here to the design and the spacing, sorry, spacing, I brought it to zero. So if I would say 100, it appears over there, 100. So I can bring it back. And also here, bring it a bit closer and then over here I can increase it. So that's a nice way just dragging and dropping why not it's a front page editor so it's really easy to just drag a few things until i'm satisfied and if you really want to make it pixel perfect you can click over here design and go to spacing and then i can adjust things command or control s but what happens when we check this on a phone or a tablet that looks like that. And that's what I do not want. So we're going to make it use of a little bit of CSS. Um, I really like the page builder Divi and sometimes you need to use CSS. And sometimes I think, Hey, couldn't this not be placed within the editor? So you don't have to use CSS until this point. No. So what I will do, I have this area open and that means that everything I add also the CSS will be only added to the tablet view and the mobile view. So I click over here on this green area again, if you cannot find it, the layers and then the second section. So over here I can uh, make this a hero. Let me see. Sorry. Hero. Double click. Make sure it's selected. I somehow don't see that. Yes. Logos or case studies. Then I open this and I want to go to the row settings. So I click over here. And then I see five columns. I want to go to the structure of the column. So I click over here. Then I go to advanced custom CSS. And then in the main element, I want to say the width of this element is 17%. Then place an exclamation mark and say important. And then close it with this, a semicolon. And what you see, it becomes smaller over here. So no more two rows with a lot of big logos. No. So I copy this. Then I click on the check mark. I go to the second one. Advanced. Custom CSS. And over here I paste it. But keep in mind when you go back to the big screen. It looks normal because you need to make sure you're editing this in the tablet mode, not this one. So right now it's also over here. Cut it over here, paste it over here, check this and then go back to the first one, advanced custom CSS. Let's take a look at the desktop view. Yes, it's over there. I don't need it. I only want it to be placed in the tablet mode. So it's a little bit of a weird workaround, but hey, it works. I go to the third column, advanced custom CSS, make sure we're in the tablet view. So if I paste it over here, it should not be here. Perfect. I go back to the fourth one, advanced. Paste it. And the fifth one, custom CSS. 
tablet. Now, as I said before, when you adjust something over here, it will automatically be adjusted on the phone. So let's have a look. Command S. Right now, all those logos are next to each other. I want to decrease this area a bit. Save it. Okay. And on the phone, they're still next to each other. There's a lot of uh, space left over here. Why? Because over here at the column settings, advanced, I said 17%. So if I copy this, I can bring this to 90% and make it a little bit bigger. There's a small glitch. So I go to the, I copy this, go to the second area, advanced, custom CSS, paste it and make it 19. The third one, advanced, custom CSS, 19, and you see them become uh, a little bit bigger. So uh, let's take a look here, advanced, and take a look over here when we paste it, they become a bit bigger. Columns. Advanced. Perfect. So, refresh. When you make it smaller. It looks like that. I'm happy with the results. Let's go back to the desktop view. So as a complete thing, I think it looks uh, nice. Uh, maybe I want to adjust a few more things over here. I want to make it uh, the line height a little bit higher. Now I want to make it float so I can see how it looks. Okay, then I go to the text. Okay, then I can take a look at the spacing everywhere, maybe a little bit more space over here. Perfect. So if you've created this, I'm proud of you. You did a great job. And this is how it looks. I'm really happy. What I want to do to finish it off, I go to the settings over here of this section. Then I want to go to design. And I search for a divider and at the bottom of this section, I want to have a divider and I can choose a lot of different styles. So if I choose this one, look at that, you see a nice divider, but it, it does not look right yet. We can choose another one, create something like this or this. And I want to keep it simple, just a line like that the other way around. So uh, I can change the height over here. I want to flip it. And if I want to repeat it, I can create something like that, but one is perfect for me. And I want it to be on top of the content. What does it mean? It will be on top of this logo. So if, so if this logo will be in color and, and this area will be a little bit higher, it will be on top of the logo. And now it will be underneath. So, you know, let's do underneath. In order to make it look better, I drag it to the left, I want to go to the spacing area. And then at the button padding, I want to increase it. And then again, let's take a look at the tablet. Okay, there I definitely want to decrease it. And then on the phone. It's also a decrease, but what I want to do, I want to go to the, okay, let's go back to the tablet view because I think it's a really strong line. It can be a little bit less. Sorry, I need to go to the dividers. Bottom, there it is, and the height. Okay. And then over here. And then 
smartphone. I'm okay with that. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. No, I'm not. No. Go to design again, dividers, button. And there it can be even decreased even further. 30. And then I want to go to the sizing. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Spacing. And then over here. Like that. Save. Refresh. Great. I want to make it smaller. It looks like that. It's time to create our second area. So I go back to the desktop view or command or control minus minus. I click on the plus. I go for regular and I want to have one column with a text area. I select it and I can type my text. It can be a paragraph. It can be a header. And I want to create a header. So I type my text over here, traditional and digital marketing. And let me show you how you can style this in a certain way because branding is important. So what I want to do, I want to make the background dark blue and I'm so excited. This is it. Perfect. No, I don't like it. So I go to design to the text. I want to make the text white. So I scroll down a bit. I can change the text color here or I can scroll down a bit further and change the text color to light. Then I want to create a little bit of spacing before I do that. Okay. Let me go back to the text. Click over here and change this to a heading two. So it becomes a bit bigger. Then I go to design to the heading text or I click over here. H2. I can make it capitals if I want to. I can bring it to the right, to the center. I keep it at the left. But I want to change the heading and it says default. But if I change it to new Nito, look at, look at this area. It changes. So by default, Nunito is not the heading text. So I save everything. Command S. Then I want to go to the website. And over here I hover and then go to the theme customizer. Then I go to the general settings typography. And then the header font, it says the default theme font. I want to change that to Nunito. The only thing is what I don't like, you need to scroll all the way. So normally when I do this, I have a different screen and I watch a uh, lot of things, all three of them. And then when I'm uh, at the end of the film, then I'm finally at the end for my font Nunito. So I fast it forward. It took me nine hours to get here. And I'm still not there. Yes. Whoa, I'm going to take a break. And now we need to find the font for the body. I want that to be open sans. Fast forward. And this time I watched the trilogy of the Hobbit. There I am, open sans. Open. But now it will save me time in the future. Okay, the body text color by default, I want it to be this color. The headers also, sorry, sorry, this one. Okay, publish, close it. Maybe I should exit the visual builder and enable it again so it can load all the new settings. So now by default, this should be Nunito. I click over here and I can work on it further. Okay, no capitals, but I do want to decrease the text size. I want to make it quite small. And then I want to scroll up and make the font semi bold. Yes. Then I go to spacing. And then from within this area, so padding, I want to decrease it or increase it. And then at the left, the top until I think, yes, this is it. If I would say zero here, nothing will change. 
Perfect. Now I want to decrease this blue background. How can I do that? That's not at spacing, but it's at sizing. When I decrease this, it will be decreased in percentage. So depending on the width of my screen, it will become bigger and smaller. That's not what I want. So I want to do it in pixels, 300 pixels. And then I see I can make it smaller. I think 200 is okay. Okay, I need to increase it. Okay, and then pixel perfect. I want to have the same width over here as I have over here. And that way I have this nice area over here. But the text is wrong. So traditional. And now I need to increase it again. So depending on the text, you need to change the sizing. And then you can create a header like that without using any code. Then I want to have a new area. So over here, I click on the plus and I go for a new text area. This time I want to have a header. So I say designed to make you grow fast. That's what this company is all about. Okay, I click over here, make it a heading two. Then I go to design, heading text, H2. And this time when I change it to new Nito, look at this area over here. Yes, nothing changes. That means that it's by default the new Nito heading and that will save me time in creating the website. And if I want to change the font somehow, sometime, the main font for headers, it will be changed in the whole website. So that will save me a lot of time. I want to make it bold and I want to give it a color, this blue, dark blue color. If I want to bring this closer to each other, I can do that with spacing. This time margin and with margin, I can also have a negative value so I can make it pixel perfect. I think it's okay. Command S, Control S. Now I want to click on the new plus because I want to have a new row and this time with two columns. We're still in the same section so I can have multiple rows in the same section and that's what I really like. So this time two areas and again a text module. So I start typing. Okay, so I'm saying I want everything to be in one company so they don't have to go to different companies to let their company grow better. And I'm happy with the size of everything or not. Okay, then I want to go to the design, to the text, or I click over here. And I can make it, let's say 13. Okay. I can go to this skeleton view. I can duplicate this area, bring it to the right. And now if I say command plus, plus, it is added. So over here I can continue with the text and new text. Okay. So far so good. I want to decrease this area to zero also here and I can even go over here to the design spacing at the margin decrease it so it comes a little bit closer and what I want to do now I want to give this a small background a, a slight effect in the background so I click over here go to the background go to an image click on the plus Upload files, select files, and then I search for background stroke. It looks like that. I open it. Remove the dash, copy, make it a habit to do this every time. And upload the image and there it appears. I'm not happy yet. We can do a few things. We can make it a parallax effect. So when I scroll, it moves. Well, right now we don't see that. We need to create an area below that before we see it. So again, and then true or, or CSS, that means it's, uh, it's sticky. So when I scroll, it looks like that. But then 
it looks weird with this background over here or with this uh, divider. So I don't want that. So what else can I do? I go to the image, turn that off. Right now it's covered. I can make it fit. It looks like that. I can bring it to the center, right? And that's what I like. And then I can play around with cover. And you see that word area and the actual size. Actual size. Well, in this case, the best thing would be to make it fit. And uh, no repeat. Okay. Or you can go to Photoshop, make this a bigger, and in that way it will become a bit bigger. So save it. Refresh the page. Now it looks like this. What I want to do now, I want to show a portfolio. I want to show my work. Oh, also over here, I show for for who am who am I am working. By the way, I see there are no links. I want that. I can do that over here to a certain page and then it becomes a link. But over here, I want to show a portfolio. Uh, I have a different tutorial about it, how to make a portfolio using the Divi theme. If you want to find that, uh, you can go to YouTube and search for Divi theme tutorial or Divi theme portfolio tutorial. There it is, two years old. I will make a new one. Or you go to 30corp.com, tutorials, and then Divi. Or you will find the most, most up to date one over here. Yes. So I will uh, implement that tutorial in my website, and then it will look like this. Beautiful. So if you want to learn how to create something like that, Watch the tutorial about creating a portfolio using the Divi theme. And now we can increase areas, decrease them. See if everything looks right this way. Well, this looks great. Let's take a look at the tablet. Okay. So over here, I can click, I can go to design, to the sizing and make sure I have the tablet. I can make it smaller, but again, I think um, the same amount of pixels will be perfect for the tablet. And that is the case. And then with the phone, smartphone, one pixel smaller or one pixel bigger. That's a glitch. And glitches do exist also within the Divi theme even within the Divi theme. Okay. Looks nice. Show all cases and on the phone. And what I can do if I want to, I don't want to scroll too much on the phone. I can click on this module or um, go over here to the latest section. I can give this a name section, digital marketing. I can open it. There's um, the first row, the second row. Here's the third one. So I need to open the third one and then I want to remove or hide the latest two columns because I don't want to scroll too much on the phone or let my visitor scroll too much. I don't want his or her thumb to be hurt. So I go to, and with hurt, I mean, don't mean that people hear the hurt, but they, the pain, you know? Okay. Advanced. Uh, Conditions. No. <laughs> okay, come on. Visibility. De disable on the phone. The same with the latest one, latest column. Advanced. Visibility. Disable. Okay. So let's check it out. Funk. So, brothers, check it out now. Okay. Great. Personal information. Also great. And then on the smartphone, it should be gone. Those two. <gasps> it works. Or not even on the smartphone. I am happy. Show all cases. It all looks 
beautiful on any device unless you're not using Nokia and Nokia. Okay, no. I have an idea. Let's continue with the tutorial. So I click on the plus, but this time we go for a specialty area. What I want to have is a right big area and then a left area. Actually like this one. So I click on it and now I can decide how many columns I want to have at the left. Well, I want to start with one and then I want to have a text module. Okay. And then below that, I can click over here and then I can have an area with two columns, but still, and I want to add a blurb, but still have that right area. So in that way you can use the specialty area. And I really like it. So I save it. I close this. And I want to go to the section settings. And then I want to go to the background, choose a color, which is dark blue. And I want to do the same thing as over here. It's not a mandatory, but over here I can go for a background image, upload files. I go to my desktop. And I go for the background circle. It's a square. Upload the image and it will appear like that. But I can also make it a parallax effect or CSS. So it stays in the background like that. But I don't want that. So I turn it off, then I can make it cover or fit. I can bring it to the center right, so it will be over here. Or what I can do, I can remove it over here. I scroll down, I go to the column to background. And there I want to have that image. I don't see anything yet. Maybe because we, it's because we don't have any content yet. So over here, I want to insert an image. I click over here, upload files, select files. I have three separate images and I can show you how you can uh, use those together, uh, create animations, which can give you a really nice effect or just show you how to upload an image like this. So it will save you a lot of time for right now. I will just upload the normal one. If you want to learn how to work with the three separate layers, I have the tutorial about it. You can find it at 30 corp.com. Otherwise really this tutorial will be seven hours. I'm not accelerating. I don't know how to pronounce that. Really, there's so much to talk about Divi. I don't want to scare people by showing them a seven hour tutorial. So over here below scroll effects and uh, animation effects. Let me turn off my mail account. So I upload the image. There it is. So what I can do over here, I click on the image, then I go to design animation and I want it to slide in from the right or from the left to the right to the left. I can change the duration and I can make it appear after one second. So you'll see that nice background. Okay, over here I have to make everything white. So I click over here and I can make it white at the design. And I hope by now things will start to make sense for you. You know by yourself already what you need to do. But I want to create an area that looks like this. So how can I do that? I duplicate it or I go over here. Let me see. I go for this text area. I drag it over here. There it is. And the second one, the title. Drag it over here. And then I can make the 
text light light but it's still dark so let's take a look over here and or get rid of it yes okay and then i want to go to the first area you don't see the background now so i can change that that design or sorry at the, the background to the lighter one like that and i have a special thing in my company it's called marketing 365 and with that with that system i can help people to grow their company like crazy so i go to design spacing sorry sizing and i can decrease it i can make it 160 120 like that let's take a look at the tablet 115 115 and the smartphone 150 and you see a uh, web design big part of it oh yeah once let's say 160 or 14 is is uh doing the mobile design because websites are being found more or uh, viewed more on a smartphone than on a computer so it's really important to optimize all your websites for all devices so i click over here see what's going on with the spacing bring that back to zero and then i get, oh, can go over here and type my text okay the style is already the same as over here so i keep it like that so i can save a little bit of time i want to have a button so i let me see do i have a button yeah, over here duplicate it drag it here below and then i drag this on top of it okay i adjust it change the text learn more change the link of course i can go forward slash or forward slash marketing 365 but then i need to have a page for that i go to design alignment bring it to the left or nothing at all so it will stay at the left automatically then i go to the button to the background i want to make it light and then when i hover over it i can make it dark or keep it like that but when i hover over it to also be elevated a little bit so i refresh the page that's good enough for me okay then over here we have the blurb and i don't want to use an image i want to use an icon but first the title i want to say support for brands brands and i want to type my text over here okay well it looks like this. Let's go to the icon. Use an icon. I want to search for a heart. Not a fat heart, a normal heart. A broken heart. No. Design. Image and icon. Icon color. White. You can have a background. <laughs> no, thank you. The, the uh, placement. I want it to be at the left. And I close this. I want to go to the text and make it light so I can see a little bit of what is going on. Yes. And you know what? The color of the icon, let it be light blue. Or, hey, transparent. Or we click over here and we go for red. But it's not the branding but it's a heart so it's up to you what you want to do and then i want to go to the text design text you don't have to follow along everything exactly like i do it let me click over here but i just want to show you how it is done 11 pixels then i want to duplicate this area drag it to the right and then i want to change the title too 
support for managers. Okay. Yeah, I can, I can change it. So I search for Slack, Slack. Okay. It's, it's nice. The, the heart, but it's the brand. It, <laughs> if I'm promoting brands, at least I should have a good brand myself. So I have to change the color back to the lighter one. It is what it is. By the way, if this one is still uh, a different color, so let's say uh, purple, what I can do, right mouse click on this module, copy the module styles, and then over a different module, right mouse click, paste module styles. And it's you can change everything, the, 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 the font size, the font, the colors. So save it. Refresh. Great. But how does it look on a different device? On a smartphone. Divi is doing a great job itself. Perfect. Okay. Now I want to take it to the next level. I want to copy this whole module. So I duplicate it. I have two of them. Then I want to go to the framework. So you see, um, digital marketing twice. So I can grab this one by clicking on this icon, scroll down and release it over there. Then I go back to the view. Okay. So Double click over here and I say Y advantage. Now I can go to design, to the sizing, and I can bring it down. Copy this over here, the tablet view, paste it, smartphone view, paste it and one pixel lower. Otherwise there's the glitch. Then over here, the title, double click or triple click. Okay. And everything below that, bye bye. I don't need you. And then over here, I want to have a plus with two columns and even better. Let me close this or, 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 or. Let me go back, command Z. I click over here and then I can change it. That's also nice. So this area is bigger. I want to go for an accordion. And I want to have my first text by clicking here. And I type my text. Okay. The second one. So let me fast forward and uh, fill in all the information. And this is how the content looks. So I click on it and it looks like this. Those colors change when I hover over it or when I click on it. And I want to adjust the styling. So the first thing I want to do, click on the plus. I want to add an image. And I want to show you how you can get images for free. Pixabay.com. I search for Amsterdam. I search for a nice image, for instance, this one. I click on free download. I'm not a robot. I rename this Amsterdam Media Group Marketing. Then I go to the website, click over here. Drag the image, copy the text, paste it, paste it. And I upload the image. What I see, it's not a square. I want it to be a square. So I click again, click on the image, click on the image over here, edit the image. And now I want to change the 
aspect ratio. So I can crop this. Right now you see those crop lines over here. I want it to be one by one. So I make it as big as possible and I select an area. This one, then I click on the crop button and I save it and I update it. So it's a square image right now, as you see over here. Then I can close this. And now let me see, maybe I should save it and refresh the page. I scroll down, click over here, remove this one, add an image. And right now it's the square one. And that's what I wanted. Then I go to the settings of the row, this green area by clicking on this icon. And at the design, I want to open the sizing tab. And I want to use a custom gutter width of zero. And look what will happen. Everything will stick to each other. That's what I want. Equal column heights. Yes. Then I want to go over here to the row settings. Go to the background and give it a background that is white. And when I make it blue, I see there's space left over here. So I go to design spacing and at the padding, I say zero. Turn this on. Then I go back to content background, make it white. Now I want to go to the background of this whole section. There is this image over here. I don't need that anymore. But what I want is not this, not this, but a really light gray. So you see a small distinction over here. And now I go to this area to design. Let's take a look. The icon will change that, uh, but the color can be blue or Let's say three, three, three. So this is the icon right now. I want to use the font size and make it a bit bigger. 20. How about the toggle? The background color, I want it to be white and of the closed one. So right now it's gray. I want it to be white. Then I want to go to the text. That's okay. The title text. Make it Nunito for just for the sake to be sure. I increase the text or no, it's fine. 16. I want to make it a little bit thicker, the font weight. So I make it bold. So I scroll down a bit further to see the closed title text. I also want it to be three, 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 a little bit darker. Everything else is fine. Then I want to go to the border. Right now you see a border all around it. I can decrease it can increase it, decrease it. I can make it zero. I want to have a border at the left that is two pixels that has the, the, this color. And you know what? At the top, or you know what? at the bottom, I also want to have one pixel. And that is fine with me like that. Okay, what we also can do when we go to the module, we can go to those individual accordion items. So I go to the first one. I go to design. And here I can change the icon. So let's search for light. I can add this one. So when I go to a different one, there it is. Then the second one, fast response time, icon, time. Something like that. Or a clock. Okay, the third one. Reputation. So how about a check mark? And then the fourth one. Maybe you have something about process. or just search through everything. The 
the whole process like that. Okay. Command S. Refresh the page. It looks like that. I think that is beautiful. So what else can we do? We can add a blog post, but we do not have blog posts yet. I have tutorial about that because not everybody wants to have a blog post in their website or blog post. I suggest you have that because it's a great way to get organic visitors to your website. If you write about the things you love or you offer as a service, like for instance, uh, marketing techniques, SEO techniques, how to create your web shop, and create posts about it, people can find you and then they think, hey, that is a nice post. They will probably know what they're talking about and then you can get new clients. So uh, I skipped that part, but I wonder what I want to end with for the homepage is a form. So I create a new regular section with one column and I want to go for the form, contact form. And I close it for now over here. I go to the background and I choose the dark color and then I want to have you know what? I don't want to have a dark color. I want to have a gradient with this color and with this color. And I want it to be a linear, sorry, radial. The starting position is at over here. So I can see it really well where it is. And I want it to be on top. Okay. And actually the other way around. So over here should be the lighter color. Over here should be the darker color. Okay. Then I want to, want to have a title. So I duplicate this one. I drag it. Change the text design to light. If it's not working, I should overwrite it over here somewhere. Okay, let me click over here and then make it white. Yes, then I go to the sizing, sorry, spacing. And I let that is all go. I want to bring it to the center. So if I go to the text, let me see, bring it to the center, uh, make the text a bit bigger. Again, I need to select this. Okay, and that content, I want to say ready to get started. Okay, and then I want to have my form. I click over here. I can have my name. I can adjust things over here. So the field options, uh, it's all okay. Again, if you want to have an in-depth tutorial about the Divi form, Divi form tutorial. Let's see which one comes first. Mine, nine months old. Whoa, I didn't know though it was such well, an <laughs> such an in-depth uh, tutorial, but it is. Oh, with all the options. Yeah, you can do so much Jesus. things over here. So you can find out exactly how to make a form. I want to make it like this. So here it is. Uh, I forgot or forgot forgetting the right word but uh we have not optimized this yet so let's take a look for the tablet okay i can say hey you know what forget about it on the tablet advanced visibility hide it on the phone and on the tablet so it will look like that this definitely needs some changing. So I click over here, alignment for the smartphone. Let it be at the left, but I did not select it the right way. So H2 on a smartphone like that. But then I would like to have some spacing from the left. Okay, 
15. Save it. And sometimes I get across things like this and it does not work as I want. And then I need to be flexible and see what I can do. Okay. So this whole page is doing a great job on a mobile phone. Okay. I want to show you one more thing before I go to a different page over here. I click on it to scroll effects and we can enable vertical motion. That's a lot. So let's say it's offset one, one. Here it goes up and then it goes down. It goes with us. If I drag this all the way, it only goes up. And you can do that also with different things, horizontal motion or rotating. So I can enable it. Okay, that's a lot. So how about 20? If I do that, I want to go to design, animation, and I want to remove that one. So it will not slide in. So I refresh the page. Let me see if it is saved. Really important. Refresh. Now it goes like that. And that's what you can do with pretty much anything within the website. I think we made a great website, a great page, and we it is optimized for all devices. I hope you'll learn a ton of stuff. And now let's take a look what else we can do. By default, the Divi page builder comes with a nice header. You can adjust it a little bit in the theme customizer and you're good to go. It looks great out of the box. But if you want to get everything out of it, you can create a header using the Divi Builder. And I created a separate tutorial for that. Why? Because it's quite a big subject. I don't want this tutorial to be seven hours long. So you can do three things. First, you can follow that tutorial and learn how to create a beautiful header yourself. Second, you can uh, import it. I will show you how to import this header. We are going to make in a separate tutorial in this tutorial. So you can just import it and adjust it to your wishes. Save yourself a lot of time. Or three, you can get angry with me and quit this video because you hope that everything was bundled in one big tutorial that is seven hours long. So it is choice time. One, two, two, three. It's up to you what you're going to do. I hope it's one or two. We have created this nice, simple menu. And when we scroll down, it becomes a bit smaller. And this is uh, built into the Divi theme. So just out of the box, it's quite okay. And if you want to keep it like this for every page, you can do that. Hey, it's your website. But if you want to take this to the next level, I want to show you how you can do that. Also for the footer, we can create a custom footer. So in order to create a custom header that is transparent, so it shows the, this blue background and when you scroll, it becomes a different logo in a different color and things change over here. If you want that, then go to 30 corp.com to tutorials Divi and search for the Divi header tutorial over here. It's not yet created. I'm going to create it right now. And if you want to import this end result you see over here, let me show you how that is done. So I close this, I close this and I go to divi.30corp.com. Hit enter. I will be redirected to this page. I leave my name, 30 and my email address. And I can get the templates. You can unsubscribe any time soon or later. I'm from Europe, so I need to consent with a few things. And if you want to learn how you can do something like this, I have to talk about that. Search for convert kit tutorial. I expect to be number one and I'm not. So you can also search for 30 after that. And there it is. Four months ago, two and a half hours, I show you everything you need to know in order to grow an email list and uh, provide value of what I'm doing right now. But, um, that's what I wanted to say. Check your email. So I need to go to my Gmail account. I download my templates and there it is. So this is the header. And when I scroll, this is the header with a different logo and on the mobile, it looks like this. I can download the header over here. It will be a zip file and I can unzip it. 
And look at this. There's a Jason Fell. And I was also listening to m music of Jason Upton with an A in between the J and S. Let's go to the back end. Go to Divi, Divi library. And there are two ways to do this. You can click here on import and export. Click on import, select the file, and then go to downloads and go for the JSON file and import it. And if this does not work, which can be the case, then you can go to the theme builder. Don't restore. And I want to add a header for the homepage. So I click on the plus over here for the homepage, create a template. I save the changes. Then I click on custom header. I want to build from one from scratch. Okay, now I click on those three dots over here. I click here on this icon with the arrows. I search for the tab import and I select the file. The JSON file, open it. I can replace the existing content and make a backup of this, but I don't need that. And I click on insert DV builder layout. This time it works. Okay, now you can go to the layer area, go for the desktop header, row, the first column, change the white image with your image, with your logo, the colored image with your logo, and then for the tablet and the mobile view, change the image over here. Then when you save it, you need to close this. So this header we just created is assigned to the homepage. I click on save the changes. And now when we go to the website, we imported this page. And if you have created something, something beautiful and you want to share it with the world for free, or you want to sell it, or you want to get someone's email address. You can enable the visual builder, click on the three dots, click on this icon, the most right one, and you can export this as the advantage homepage. It will be exported and downloaded over here. If I would go to a different website made with Divi, for instance, this one, and I create a, a new page. I call this one advantage publish publish um, use the Divi builder. Keep in mind that this is a simple JSON file 4.2 megabytes, but it cost me hours to make it. So I want to build from scratch over here. Uh, what I wanted to say is that you can sell this. You can sell this to people. You work really hard on this. You export it like this and then you can sell it. You can turn your, your Divi knowledge into a monetization machine. Over here, same icon. This time I import it. I drag this one over here. And I import this complete page. Okay. There it is. Wow. Exactly the same. So I save it. Command S. I go to the back end to media and there are all the images. This is amazing. This, this can save you so much time. So what was the page at advantage? Great. And to combine everything, uh, let's go to the back end and go to Divi theme builder. Let me check this custom header. Yes. Okay, I go back and I click over here, manage template assignment, and I go to a specific page. That's the advantage page. Save it. Save the changes. Really important that you save it over here. Go to the website. Forward slash advantage. And in a few minutes, we import it. This header in this page.
Isn't that amazing? I think it is. Okay. So this is our homepage. We copied it, we imported it, and um, I'm happy except for one thing. And that's that the weather in the Netherlands could be better. Now that's another thing. Um, this background has a nice gradient. This one hasn't. So when I zoom out, I go over here. Nice. It, it looks a little bit different than everything else. Also here, there's a gradient. I miss, I'm missing that over here. How can I do that? Well, of course I can do that manually. I can create a gradient, but what I also can do, I can go to the layers, to the hero. I open the hero and in the hero, I have a full width header. I click on the icon over here, the settings icon, and then I collapse text. And at the background, I can say right mouse click. And now I can extend the background style so that every section on this page has the same background with the gradient, but that's not what I want. I want to copy this background. Okay. Then I want to scroll down to this one. I hover over here, right mouse click, paste the background and voila, ladies and gentlemen, now we have the same gradient in the background as over here. What I see now over here, is that this also has a background. The icon has a background. I don't want that. So I go to the design area, image and icon, the icon color and the background, um, gone. Now I can do a few things. Right mouse click, extend an image, uh, image and icon styles to all blurbs throughout the header, the footer and the page. Oh, I only want to do it on this page or on this section. So look at this. There's a background over here. Maybe I can make it a bit bigger. No, it doesn't work like that. Okay. Sorry. Here you see a small background. If I extend this, the background is gone. We're going to talk about it a little bit more uh, for the next page because there's so much more I can show you because there's so much to cover, so much to do with the Divi theme. And every time I make a tutorial, I fall in love with the Divi theme even more. Because also in every tutorial, I want to make the website better and do more advanced stuff. And if you can appreciate it, I can appreciate it if you would like this video. And if you want to subscribe for more upcoming tutorials about Divi, about Elementor, about WordPress, about e-commerce, about affiliate marketing, about how to sell your website, how to become a web design agency. So um, for me, it's all about sharing available knowledge, hoping in return I get a lot of um, subscribers. For me, that's uh, important. That number, I don't know why. I want to reach 500,000 subscribers in 2022. And I'm willing to share all my knowledge in order to reach that point. So having said that, what I can do, look at this. I can cop uh, copy this whole area. So what I can do, I can go to the layers. Hero. Right mouse click. I just say copy this section. I save it. Then I exit the visual builder. Now I go to the about page. I enable the visual builder like that. Now I can do a few things. I can build from scratch again. I can choose a pre-made layout and I can clone an existing page. Well, I want to go through all of these options. So I click on start building over here. I close this and now I can say right mouse click, paste the section. Look at that. There it is. I remove this one. And now I have the same exact section as before on the home page, copied and pasted just like that. So I save it. And now there's a small problem because this is a different header. And what I can do now, I can go to the background. No, <laughs> back end to the Divi area, the theme builder. And I have this home page header and I can click over here and manage the template assignments. And this time, I also want to adjust or assign it to the about page. So I save the changes. Now, when I go to your homepage, I see our header. But now when I go to about page, I also see that header. Great. I go to the homepage again. I try to open two tabs at the same time and then open the visual builder and copy and paste it. That did not work. So I go to this page. I enable the visual builder. Right mouse click. Copy the section, I exit the visual builder, I go to the about page, 
I enable the visual builder and then let me see normal area. Right mouse click, paste the section. It's a little bit weird how to do that, but hey, it works. And it's all already optimized for all devices. I can change the text now. We are one big happy family. And then um, go to the layer, full with header. Over here, say apply for a job. And change the, the link, of course, to a certain page. Save it. Exit Visual Builder. So now we have the About page with copy and pasted areas. There's another way on how to do things. If I go to the Services page, Branding, and I click on Enable the Visual Builder. We built already from scratch, but we can also clone an existing page. So if I click on choose page, maybe I want to use a lot of information from the home page again and change the information, change the content. I click on the home page and now it's copying the home page to this new page like that. And now I can change things over here. Tough way. Command S, control S. Exit. Now you see branding, grow your business the hard and tough way. And over here, it's the other way. That's a way. And now I can adjust everything over here. So maybe you want to use this area and you want to change the content or there are multiple sections you want to reuse and then change the content. And this is a great way. Then we go to marketing and then there's the third way enable the visual builder we can choose a pre-made layout and if you somehow forget to click here and you click here then how can you import a pre-made layout click on the three dots and then on the purple plus and then there are the pre-made layouts and every week there's a new layout pack a layout pack means that it's not only one page it's a whole set of pages the home page the blog page about page landing page so this will save you a lot of time if you make a website for a client and you see something that looks similar to what you have or your client have has in mind, then you can import that and adjust it to her wishes. So if I go to this one, I can import this page, but I can also import the about page on the about page and the contact page on the contact page, adjust the colors, change the content and voila, you'll save yourself a lot of time. So I can use this layout. It will be imported and in order to do that, you need to leave your username and your API key, which can be found in your Elegant Themes account, which I have shown you before. And there it is. So what I want to do now, I want to have some fun by showing you how you can adjust the styles and the colors and the text really simple using the Divi Page Builder. In this part of the tutorial, I will show you how you can speed up things and you can make things easier for yourself by doing a few shortcuts and by doing a few things and it will make your life easier. So I think it's important to have this part of the tutorial in the tutorial. And if you like what you're seeing so far, I would like to ask you to like this video. That would help me out a lot. I do a lot of, put a lot of effort in making these videos. So I hope they will rank well. So they will be found. I get more viewers, more subscribers, and that's what I'm after. So if you like it, please like the video and feel free to subscribe for more upcoming WordPress related, e-commerce related and affiliate marketing related tutorials. I'm here to help you to boost your business. It can be an agency that you start for yourself. It can be that you want to start make money online. It can be that you want to sell things online. Well, that's the same thing because then you start to make money online. If you want to learn more about that, you can subscribe and like this video and create a second account and then also like this video and dislike videos on my competitors. I can name a few that you can dislike. No, you know that dislikes also help you to get ranked. It's crazy. It's a crazy world we live in. So let's continue with the tutorial. I want to introduce you to global colors and this is amazing. Right now you see everything has a purplish look and now I need to change everything step by step, but there are multiple ways on how to save yourself some time. One of the things is global colors. 
So when I go to the background over here, I go to the background. I see my saved colors and I have used them all the time. So um, if I would go to the gradient, I can change those colors with my saved colors, but there's a better way. Over here, I have the tab global. I can click on the plus. Now I can choose a color, this one, and go back and click on the check and save it. Now I click on this button, I go to design button, I go to the global color, I click on the plus and I can create a new one, for instance, the dark one. Uh, somehow it seems to be, yeah, I need to click outside of the area and now I can add my third one, this color. And the fourth one, the black one, the fifth one, the white one, and then the latest one this one, the text. Okay. I have all those global colors. Let me, let me add one that's really different than all the others. I check this, I save it. So now I have a lot of global colors. If I click over here, I go to the background, I go to the gradient. And then the first color, I want to use a global color and I choose this one. Then I go to the second color and I use this, this global color. I scroll down a bit, I go to this button, design, button, I search for the background and I go to a global color and I change it to the green one. Okay, there's also a border. I also want to change it to a green border. What I can do now, look at this, I have green, blue and green over here. If I go to the global colors, I click on this icon. Look at this. Now I can grab this icon for this color. If I would change this to purple and I finish it, what you see now is that this color has been changed, but also this color over here. So now if I go to this button, which uses the global color, and I go to the design button over here, the, the background color, it is this global color as you see on this icon. If I click over here and I change it, look at that. You see it also changing over there. So if I make this red and I check everything and I save it, if I scroll up, it's also red over here. Some Somehow it does not appear yet. It seems to be a glitch. I exit the visual builder. And now it's red. So there's a glitch, but what I want to tell you <laughs> It would be great if there was no glitch. Then it means that when you save this or change this red color and you apply it to multiple places on the website, you can save yourself so much time. You can change the whole look of feel with just a few, with just a few clicks. So let me show you other ways on how you can speed up this process of adjusting the style of the website. So let me enable the visual builder. Start over again by removing the website. And the more you play around to this, the, the easier it becomes to get used to how everything works. So right now I know really easily I can use this layout like that. The more you play around with it, the better it becomes to navigate through the website and adjust the website to your wishes. I want to change this page into the colors and style of our website. So I click over here and this is an image. So maybe you think, okay, I should save this to Photoshop and then change it, but hey, if you go to design and you go to filters, look at this with you, you can change the colors. So maybe I want to make it dark blue. Right now it's purple. I want to make it blue. Okay. You can increase the saturation or decrease it. Make it brighter, make it darker. You can even increase the contrast. Or bring it back if you don't like it. You can invert it and then play around with the U. There's quite a lot you can do. So let's let's use a different color for now. I just want to illustrate what is possible. So I use this color, purple. Okay, I like it. So what I can say, right mouse click, copy the module styles, and then I scroll down. And here I also see an image, right mouse click. 
paste the module cells and there it is in the new colors paste the module cells right mouse click paste the module cells paste the module cells perfect what else can we do you see a button over here i want to change the colors design or is there also a button over here yes let's grab this one design and then i go to the button i change the button text color to it's it's uh, okay i go to this global background and i use this one the same i do with global the the border okay right mouse click oh there's also uh you see a, a shadow so i go to design box shadow no so right mouse click copy the module cells right mouse click paste the module cells there it goes but there are more buttons here and here and here what i can do now i showed you before but let's do it again right mouse click extend the button styles throughout this page throughout the section this row this column well i want to do it in the whole page so all the styles this blue background and stuff no shadow that will be extended so let's go to a different button this one if i extend it look at this wow look at that i like it and also here everything has changed i save it i like it over here background gradient first color the global color this one the second one this global color then i want to change the gradient to 90 okay and then over here right mouse click copy the section styles or if i want to narrow it down background copy the background so i only uh, copy the background and then over here right mouse click paste the background oh man oh man right mouse click paste the background and over here if i want to hey why not it's my website and over here i can make this sorry um make this white or the global white I can go to design, spacing, padding, 20, 20. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. We can do the same thing with titles. Change the color, design, heading text, or I can click over here and I can change this to the global color, red. Right mouse click, extend text styles throughout this page. Red, 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 red. Of course, over here now and then I need to change a few things. Modules. Design, text, make it light. Here it's red. What I can also do, I can hold shift. So I click here. Shift, 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 shift. And then I click over here. I go to the design settings, to the icon. I want to change it. I can color and it will be changed everywhere. Awesome. I want to go to the text. And since I feel like it and I totally do not care about styling anymore, I bring it to the center. I go to the body text. And since I don't care, I just make it red because it feels good. I don't want to have any new clients. So I definitely put this into my portfolio. Same over here. Shift, shift. Click here, design, 
change it to red. So we changed quite a few things to red. Let me save it. So we changed the look of view quite rapidly. And then here and then we need to adjust some colors and it will save you a lot of time. This module. So those are a few tricks in order to adjust the style of your website quite easily and fast. Another thing we can do over here, I see this text in this color. I click over here, I go to the design area or I click over here. So I see uh, this area. I see this, the color of this text. It's uh, this color. What I can do, right mouse click, find and replace. So I want to find all those colors in the entire page or in the section or in all modules. Let's say uh, just within the section, and I want to change it to, let's make a clear color. So, um, you know, definitely that it changed. Let's do this one. And if I click on replace, everything over here should become green. All those text areas. Wow. Okay. What else over here? This red color, which we have a lot in the website, as you see, red, red. I can click over here, this color, right mouse click, find and replace with this color, replace. And I was changed over here, over here, over here, and there you go. So some nice ways to adjust your website. One more thing over here. I can go to the background and I can have a gradient. I can have an image, but I can also have a video in the background. So if I go to vdevo.com, I can go for this over here or this or this. So let's do that free download. I do not use videos in the background but I just want to show you it is possible. Click on the plus, drag it over here, upload it and there it goes. But it overrides all the other ways of having a background. So what I should do over here, in my opinion, uh, go to the background, make it black and click over here. Make it a bit gradient, uh, transparent. And I go to design, spacing, check this, check this and say 50, 50. Otherwise you don't see the text that well. Um, I don't like it, but if you be uh, creative with this, you can make it uh, something nice out of it. Come on Z, come on Z, come on Z, come on Z, save closes. So let's go back to the homepage. It is time to create a footer. And again, it is choice time. You can create a footer yourself in a separate tutorial because this will take 30 minutes or you can uh, import it. I will show you how to do how to do that. Or um, yeah, that's only two options you have. Yes. Or you can follow along with a separate tutorial. You can find it in the description. Or you can import it and adjust to your wishes and save yourself a lot of time. Or there's even a third option. It's not quitting the video. It is to import a pre-made layout from the Divi library and then um, use that one and adjust that one to your wishes. Okay, it's up to you. Let's continue. If you want to import the header that I have created for you or the footer or one of the pages or all the pages, then you can go to divi.30corp.com, hit enter. You leave your first name and your email address. Then you go to your email account and there you see the confirmation link and then you can download the header. You can download the homepage or you can download the complete website. So I suggest you get this one. You download it, you unzip it. And then with those JSON files, you can import everything. And if you want to learn how, you can see that in the end of this video, I show you how to import every single step of this tutorial. You can find it in the timestamps. Okay, 
and, and throughout the website, I can, I can adjust a lot of things, of course. So if I scroll down, I think, hey, I want the header to be a bit smaller. So I can enable the visual builder. I wonder if I can add the header. Yes. I'm clicking here. Great. This looks weird. No problem. I want to go to this area and then add design spacing. When I go to the sticky state, I want to say 10 pixels. So here's 20, here it's 10. Awesome. Save it. Exit the visual builder. And now when I scroll down, it becomes a bit smaller. And then that way we can keep on changing everything. Great. So as I said, I will import this page and import this one. I will show you at the end of the tutorial how to do that. Let's go to the blog page. Not everybody wants to create a blog in their website. And that is why, again, I created a separate tutorial. And I, I really hope uh, sincerely that you don't dislike this because um, if I would put everything into one tutorial, it would be a tutorial that will be between six and seven hours. And not everybody wants to have a blog post. So people can be scared when they see a seven hour tutorial. And now it's I like, I think around three hours. So that's more appealing. And in that way you can still watch all the information, not be scared away and decide what you want to add to your website. So if you want to have a blog to your website, you can follow the tutorial that is linked in the description. Why would you want to have a blog post or a blog on your website? It will help you to be found uh, in the organic results. So if you write about the things you promote, so you promote making a website, you write blog posts about how to make websites, how to speed up your website, you can be found. And when those people find you, they can think, hey, the quality is great. I want to do business with the person because I don't want to do it myself. I want him to help me. So it's a great way to get, to get organic visitors and it's a great way to get more business. So I highly suggest you do it. And if you don't want to do that, you can follow along. And if you want to do it, you can follow the tutorial in the description. Having said that, let's continue. If you want to see the end result, I will show you right now. This is how it will look. I scroll down, logo changes. And if I go to a particular or certain blog post, it will look like this. I'll show you how to create this using a template. It's quite basic, but in the tutorial, I will dive deeper, show you more widgets here at the side and they're sticking with you. I will show you how to create a blog post. You can follow that tutorial by going to ferdycorp.com. Tutorials, Divi. When you scroll down, you will find a tutorial about that. This one, but probably with a new design because I will make a new, better tutorial about it. The same goes for the portfolio. Not everybody wants to have a portfolio. I think having a portfolio is a great thing because then you can showcase uh, to your clients or to your visitors what you have created so far and you can show that to the visitors. That's what I already said. And then they can see it and based on that, they probably want to do business with you. As I said, I have a, spe a separate tutorial about it. You can find it in the description of the video. If you want to find that, I should have left the page open. ferdicorp.com, tutorials, Divi. Scroll down, create a portfolio. It's the old version or the, the recent one, and then I'll create a new one. And if you follow that tutorial, you'll get something like this. It looks like the blog page, same style. And when I would go to one of those portfolio items or case study items or however you want to call them, you go to their individual page. And again, you can place things over here. Go to the last project or a newer project. Well, this layers one, so you don't see that over here. And it sticks with us. There's some text, some images, and in that way I can showcase what I have created for one of my clients. So what else do I want to show you? Let's go to the homepage. What I want to show you now is how you can make use of global items. I use global items all the time. They are a great way to, to speed up your editing process. And um, I love, I love global items and you will love it too when you watch the next part of this tutorial. So let's continue. Yes, let's continue. Okay. Let's talk about two things at the same time, about creating an email opt-in and creating a global item. A global item is an item or a module or a section you can use on multiple places within the website. And when you change that particular module or section, it will be changed on all the places where you use it in your website. So I enable a visual builder. 
And I scroll down all the way over here. I click on the blue plus. I want to have a regular area with one column and I search for email opt-in. There it is by default. Okay. I check it. I save it and it looks nice. Let me configure it really quick to the email account and I use ConvertKit. It's already linked. That's nice. And I select the pine form and then I go to fields and I use the name and email. That's perfect. So if I would save it, everything seems to be fine. And if I want to use this on a different page, I can copy and paste it. But what I also can do over here, when I hover over it, I can click on this icon. And now I can save this module and I save it as an email opt-in for the newsletter. And I make this a global item. This is really important that you do this. And I call this one email opt-ins. So you can have multiple categories within your global items. So I save it to the library. Then I save the page. And now if I would exit the visual builder, and I go to the contact page with a different header, which I really like. I can enable the visual builder. Let me do something crazy. Let me place the global item over here below. I click on the plus, I click on add from library. And there it is, the email opt-in newsletter. And it's green because it's a global item. And here it is. Now, if I change this, I click over here. And I say, subscribe to our newsletter. I can change the text over here. Get updates when we post new content about digital marketing and growing your business. Okay. Hey, you know what else? Go to design to the button and I use a different style. Okay. Let me make this background a little bit lighter. Okay. Look at this. This is how it looks now. But if I go and exit the visual builder, save and exit. And I go to the home page and I scroll down, subscribe to our newsletter get updates and the new button. So one more time, I enable the visual builder. I click over here. It's green because it's a global item. I go to the background and I change it to a gradient with this color. And this time, you no, know, let's some, do something weird. So we definitely will see that it is changing. I save it. I exit the visual builder, go to the contact page. Now you see those same colors over here. This is amazing. This is what I love about the Divi theme. You can use this for websites of clients. And when they say, Hey, I decided to change the text over here. Can you do that on all places in the website? You have a global item. You change it on one place and it will be changed everywhere. Don't you like that? Well, I do. Now, what I want to do, I want to give you a complete website. We spend a lot of time on the homepage. And since you have created a homepage, if you follow that part of the tutorial, you should be able now to create things using the Divi Builder. If you have not learned enough yet, let me know. Then I will create a more in-depth tutorial about the Divi Builder. And um, maybe I can make a tutorial about all the different modules and what you can do with that. If you want that, let me know in the comments. I think that would be a nice video to make. Just go through all the modules and show you what is possible. Um, yeah, I want to show you, give you all the uh, things for free and I will show you how you can get those. We talked about this before, but let me show you the power of templates within the Divi theme. This website has a header. I created this with the Divi theme. This page is created with the Divi theme. The footer is created with a Divi theme. The about page is created with a Divi theme. And all those areas can be saved as a template. So I enable the visual builder. I click over here and now I can export this. 
So what I've done, I've showed you before, but now I will, uh, I created this website. It's completely empty. Uh, it has all the pages, but it has no templates. It only has this logo. How can I make this website look like this one in a short amount of time? Well, go to divi.ferdicorp.com. You can leave your first name and your email address, and then you get the templates. If you uh, confirm the link you get in your email, you sign up over here. Then you go to this page. Then you scroll down and over here, you see the complete advantage website. I just created something really quick in After Effects. <laughs> uh, you can download the header and you'll download a zip file. I click on it. And there are the JSON files. So now I go to my empty website. I go to the back end. I go to Divi, the theme builder. Now I want to click over here. I go to the import area. I want to choose a file. It is the header and footer, which is a template. Import the DV Builder template. There it goes. It will be applied to all the pages. I say Command S. I do not only say it, I also type it on my keyboard. And I save all the changes over here just because we can. Then I go to the home page. I enable the visual builder. So it's working, but I don't see the page. So we have the header and the footer on every page. So we also have it at the contact page, the footer, the header. Let me go back to the home page. I enable the visual builder. I want to build it from scratch. Close this. Click over here. Click on this logo or this icon. I click on import, I select the file, I use the advantage home, which I just downloaded. Optimize for all devices. I click on import the Divi builder layout. You got this from me uh, by, uh, by giving me your email address, but you can also sell this. So you can create something great. You can become better in creating websites. Look at this. It's all there except for the images for the latest post. Let me save it. Command S. I exit the visual builder. I go to the about page. I enable the visual builder. Build from scratch. Do the same thing. This time the about page. Command S, exit the visual builder, the next page, services, enable the visual builder, do the same thing, import the services page. Save it. We can go to the contact page. Sorry, first we need to exit the visual builder. <laughs> Scroll down, contact, enable the visual builder. Start building. And then the contact page. And that's the way. The cookie crumbles. I exit the visual builder. I go to the home page, and in a few minutes, we imported this complete website. Keep in mind, I cannot give you all the images because they are copyright protected. Protected, but you can replace those with your own images. Uh, I like to use iStock Photo. It's really worth it. You get really high quality images, and that's really important for people. Uh, to see on your website, because if you go to apple.com, I have a simple question for you. Does it look great or does it look a little bit low quality? It looks great. This image, everything looks great. You, you, do you see how many images are used in this website? They better are high quality. Otherwise your website stinks. <laughs> Sorry to say it like that. 
really good important image good good images are really important so that is how we can import a complete website in a few minutes okay people we're getting to the end of the tutorial i hope i don't have to feel bad for all the the external tutorials i'm just figuring out what's the best way to put everything together what i've created for you is a list um with the tutorials i suggest you watch in order to make your website be found uh, get more traffic so let me show you right now so let's start with the package we have um over here if you go to elegant themes you see divi you you bought it so you can use it but you can have so much more if you take a look at all the products when you get the divi theme you also get the extra magazine theme it's for a separate website if you want to create a news website it's a great way to go if you search for extra theme tutorial 2022 you'll find me mine over here a month old and a three hour long tutorial on how to create a beautiful news website and that's one of the best themes that comes with the elegant theme package then there's the bloom email opt-in plugin a great way to collect email addresses from people on your website and then you can send them emails uh, it's not a, an email marketing tool it will link it's the bridge between your website and between an email marketing tool so there's there are two tutorials i suggest the first one is my bloom tutorial 30 otherwise you cannot find it probably i will make a new one it's 40 minutes and i will show you how you can get opt-ins unlock content and that's also a great way so we can have uh, if i go to my website 30 no 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 divi 4 that's one of the great ways i like things i like about uh, the bloom plugin uh, let me go to the email marketing tool what i can do i can place a link over here that says if you want to follow this content if you want to read the rest of this then you need to sign up and when people do that then the rest of the content will appear a great way to get people on your email list and then when you create something new a new blog post or something you can send an, an email and this blog post is about ConvertKit. I use ConvertKit uh, to, to, uh, to grow my email list. I have a tutorial about that. So you can search for ConvertKit tutorial. It's probably not the newest or the number one yet. It's number two right now, ConvertKit tutorial 2022. Two and a half hours where I show you step-by-step step how you can build your email list. And for me, that was a way to create, make a lot of money and at the same time, help a lot of people on automatic pilot. Right now, I can send an email to 50,000 people all at once, and I can uh, name them by their first name. And it's a great way to grow your business. Whatever you do, you can grow your email list. And they say the money's in the list. And I always say serving people is in the list. You know, it's not about making money, it's about helping people. Wow. Maybe it's a bit of both. Bit of both. So the bloom, then we go to Monarch. Uh, it helps you to, to it helps you to let people share things on your website so share blog posts uh, follow you but also uh, let people show how many followers you have on automatic pilot so 7.2 facebook followers 260,000 subscribers instagram linkedin all on automatic pilot and i have the tutorial about that monarch plugin and as far as i know i'm the only one that goes into the part of um uh, showing you how to link everything with api keys it's a little bit complicated but i went all the way with it over here two years old already and then um you can learn how to work with that what else i have a list over here on my phone split testing you can do split testing within the within the divi theme it's a great way to optimize your conversions if you have two separate uh, headers in your uh, video in your website so uh let's say heroes i mean heroes and you change them the look and feel the colors you can see what is converting the best and this all about conversion conversion you can find it uh, if you search for um divi split testing tutorial 30. then there's the divi theme builder i will make i have to make it a, th a theme tutorial specifically about the theme builder about creating custom headers for instance over here we see this header but if i go to the get started page i have a different header if i scroll down this goes to the left this goes to the right so i can assign specific headers and footers to specific pages and if i go to the blog page i go to a blog post post i can create a specific template for all the blog posts but i can decide to create other templates for other categories 
So in order to find out how everything of that works, um, let me let, let me log in really quick. We use the theme builder. So here at Divi theme builder, this can look overwhelming, but I will make a tutorial about that and you will have more freedom to create a website you have and then everything can be created using the Divi builder. So that's what I really like about the theme builder. So I will create a tutorial about that. What else? Google ads. Do you want to make money using your website? Well, then you can uh, search for Google ads tutorial. How about, I mean, Google AdSense tutorial and then 30 because there will be a lot of tutorials. 56 minutes. Oh, nice haircut. On how to uh, get your website approved, how to make money. And I started a new website a few months ago from scratch. And um, I made a few hundred dollars already with it without spending a lot of time to make it. So that's great. I think less than 10 hours and uh, 400 hours. So that's... Um, $40 per hour, but still I'm making money with it. And then, yeah, why not? I have an affiliate marketing tutorial, affiliate marketing 30. I have two six hour tutorials. They are separate. They, they are a little bit the same, but mostly separate. This is complete course on how to start with affiliate marketing with video or website or whatever. And this is specifically on uh, creating a website for a, with affiliate, uh, an affiliate marketing website. Okay, what else? Convert kit. I talked about Grammarly. If you write blog posts and you're not from the, from the United States or English is not that good, there's a tutorial about Grammarly that will help you to make your text better. Grammarly tutorial 30. A year old, 30 minutes. It's doable. And rank math, really important. If you want to rank your website, even though you don't have blog post, rank math tutorial. Personally, I think it's better than uh, Yoast. Also a recent tutorial, two hours. So if you want to, you can go and follow all those tutorials, spend a lot of time learning how to make your website better. And if, you, if you're missing a video, you're like, hey, I want to learn something else. Hey, feel free to let me know. And one more thing, I also have a tutorial about how to start a YouTube channel uh, and make money with it through affiliate marketing. I have a course about it. At this moment, it's $997. I can tell you it's it's the real deal and by now i hope you trust me here go to courses passive income with 30 or passive income with youtube and um uh some people bought the course and they have made zero dollars with it as one guy that bought the course and he made uh more than a thousand dollars in one day it's crazy uh does it depend on the course well the course is good the course will help you but it's up to you if you persevere with it. That's why it's, yeah, it's, it's a thousand dollars, a little bit less. I think it's really cheap, but I just don't know how to sell it. I'm just throwing it at you. Uh, the last time somebody bought it was a few months ago. <laughs> so I just don't know how to promote it. So I keep on continuing to make free videos because that's what I like more. But I just want to tell you that. So that brings me to the end of this tutorial. Thank you for uh, watching this tutorial. If you have any feedback for me on how to how I did this, please let me know. I want to become better in making videos with, with my studio, with the lighting. I know my teeth are a little bit yellow, so I'm going to find a way how to make them wider using a certain light. I want to improve. I want to make the best tutorials possible. And um, if you have any feedback how, about how I present things or uh, the external tutorials, maybe I should leave them within. Let me know. If you want to, please like this video and subscribe for more upcoming tutorials. And then I hope you will create amazing websites using the Divi theme. And remember when you bought the Divi theme, you can use it on unlimited websites as long as you have a subscription. So if you have a lifetime subscription, you can use it for the rest of your life on unlimited websites with high quality support. I wish you a great day. Good luck with everything you do and bye bye.